Welcome back, friends, to another episode of the Zephcast, the show where we get to know your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters alike. I am your host, Zephyrs XP, and with me today, we got artist and cartoonist, fellow Twitch streamer, and my good friend, Iris Amelia. Thank you so much for being here today, Iris. How's your day going so far? Hey, Zeph. Um, it's, it's going. I um, have my coffee. Ooh. Um been a long day i i work full time so it's been today was particularly draining um i don't know if you're aware of like it stuff but i was drowning in tickets today oh, um no so yeah but it you know i got through it but we got to go to the the dog park but i had this Ooh, unfortunate yeah. incident that i'm gonna talk to you about like super quick and yeah. you'll understand because you are a dog parent um we brought my dog his name is cosmo mm -hmm. he's a havanese he's like barely 15 pounds we brought him to the dog park along with his favorite ball which is literally a squeaker from another toy that he ripped to shreds oh yeah and some kid started playing fetch with the ball and then it became not fetch but more hey i'm a pitcher for professional league baseball and the kid chucked his ball over the fence of the dog park and it what? went into brush and the ball's gone and now my dog is wondering he's all he's just a little over one year old he's wondering where's my ball which was literally his favorite toy in the universe and my heart is shattered and i hate children at this point in time. <laughs> that is so frustrating <laughs> like i know the i know the kid didn't mean to do that but he it, very frustrating so not now the we best have to way to go about find, it find the next toy and buy it and then wait for him to tear it open to get to the ball and, and go from there but overall i'm having a good day and i'm excited for labor day weekend so oh that'll yeah. be that'll be fun do you have any plans for labor day um i do not have any plans for it um to be honest i i feel like this whole year has gone by so fast. I can't even keep track of the days anymore. Um, like today, before I was getting ready to go live, I was I was typing in Discord like "Happy Monday, everybody," and then I was like, "Wait a minute, I don't think it's Monday. I think it's Thursday." Time so, is a concept. I yeah, it's just I have blown no concept so of time fast anymore. by. Yeah, I don't even. It, it's crazy in my mind to think that we're closer to 22 than we even are to 2020. Stop talking. No. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but usually to start the podcast, I always love to start with a fun icebreaker question. So, Iris, do you think you're ready for the icebreaker question we got? I think so. I think so. Kitty. Kitty. All right. Let's go. I know you're a big Star Wars fan. So, oh boy. If we could travel back to a galaxy far, far away, would you join Team Jedi or Team Sith? Which would you, you know, choose? You know, your chats, your chats have been very heated with this conversation and <laughs> debate. Um, I'd probably go light side because I was a goody two shoes all through school. <laughs> but I would be a very gray Jedi. Um, yeah, you know, I can I can lean into the dark side a little bit. Um, definitely, I like the nuance that mm. um, the Star Wars IP has been delving into in the more recent stuff. Um, yeah, definitely light side. Would you pick dark side? You'd pick I, dark side. I feel like, you know, I feel like if I was asked 10 years ago, probably say the light side because it's like, you know, for the good of the universe and galaxy and all that. But yeah. I feel like as I've gotten older, I've seen more, more gray in life. And I feel like sometimes yeah. Sith isn't necessarily bad per se. They just have like a different view of the world. And I don't, the more you dive into the Jedi's history, the more it's not exactly good side either. They yeah. have they have a lot of very mm -hmm. controlling and exclusive practices that they have to really manipulate the people following them. So yeah, I don't know. Oh I, yeah, I feel like gray would be the perfect, you know, kind of in the middle where you understand both. But if I had to pick one, I mean, everyone says the Sith has cookies. So <laughs> the dark side does have cookies. And I bet the light side has like granola and yogurt or something. <laughs> something healthy. <laughs> something healthy. Totally right. It's like, do you want a bowl of fruit or do you want those chocolate chip cookies? Do you want those cookies? Right. Totally feel that. Um, so first real question of the podcast for you, my friend. Who is Iris, the streamer and the person behind the streamer? 
You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, I so Zeph, you know, I I started streaming in uh, March, so I am still very baby streamer. Um, I'm still learning who I am as a streamer and what I want to put out into the world um, as a streamer every day. Um, I think I like to think of my stream as a cozy, comfy chaos spot of Twitch, where I focus a lot on chat and I focus a lot on making it a very welcoming and frankly loving place. Um, I'm radically transparent with my emotions and uh, you you probably would ask this in a little bit, but um, I started streaming back in March um, as a way of processing my grief following the death of my mother, Helen Gutierrez, uh, to COVID-19 in July of 2020. Um, I no, started sorry. streaming. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I started doing this to um, not only process my emotions and try to find links or correlations with how, how I'm feeling with games that I'm playing. But I don't, and I don't know if you've, I'm going to speak, let me preface this by saying I'm speaking from my own grief experience. Grief is a completely unique process for every single individual, every single type of loss. But I have found in my experience that when you lose someone as profound as a parent, um, you really lose yourself. And I lost myself July 17th, 2020. And it took a very, very, very long time to feel like I was back or like I was like present enough to feel like myself. And so I had found a friend of mine, um, Natto Bean Jean, um, starting to stream and I like watched her for a bit and I thought, oh man, that looks like fun. And you know, when you're grieving, like you're not having fun, <laughs> you're crying every day, you're cursing the world, you're, you know, what have you. And, you know, I started and I think I streamed to one, which was myself or my off screen husband and you know, like had those jitters, but when I like finished, I'm like, oh, okay, like it wasn't too bad. And I did it again and I did it again. And then I realized that I was good at it. Like I, I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the creative process that came tied to streaming. So like thinking about your content, thinking about your marketing, thinking about your brand. Right. Um, all the key terms. And yeah, all, the, all those fun, buzzy terms. Um, and it, it was really a wonderful creative outlet that allowed me to get back in touch with myself. So for the first time in the life, I feel okay. Yes, I'm still very sad that my mom is no longer here when she should still be alive today, frankly. Um, but, you know, I've been able to not only tell her story and emphasize, you know, why we need to be um, mindful and careful while we're in a pandemic. Um, I've been able to also just meet a lot of really cool people, you included, like a lot of cues I've taken um, toward building my stream and making um, making it better has been from from your stream. So I'm going to kiss the ring a little bit. Thank you, Zeph, for, for you know, being you. a wonderful <laughs> a wonderful role model um and also if people choose you know allow them space to feel the feels because um what i found sometimes is that there may be and this isn't true for everybody but um you know when you come onto a, a stream or a broadcast or some kind of performance aspect you know you're kind of somewhat putting on a persona for some for right. some folks i wanted to be very real and i've you know i've cried on stream i have cursed on stream i curse a lot 
Um, and, you know, I've been and I have confronted a lot of really sucky emotions to let folks know, like, this is OK. This is normal. This is part of life. Spoiler alert, like people you love will eventually pass on and you're going to have to figure out how to deal with it. Um, and that's what I try to bring forward in an accessible way and a very genuine way. Um, so I, I always emphasize to, to people like what you see is what you get. Like this is this is who I am as a person. I don't really have a filter, um, much to my chagrin sometimes where it's like, ah, no, I need to reel it in. Um, but yeah, I, I have found wonderful communities um, on Twitch through um, my grief and it's been quite the journey because you know and i will bring this up sometimes in my own um stream like if i could choose between having my mom back or this newfound twitch universe life with all these connections and all these joyous moments i'm gonna pick my mom i'm sorry but i this is the As hand i've been dealt yeah, this is the right. hand I've been dealt, and um, you know, I'm just working with what I got, and I, I just hope that there that, that folks can relate at some capacity. And if you're out there watching and you've lost someone, I'm I'm very very sorry, and I am with you. I don't know if you've ever lost somebody like that. Like any any loss is a terrible loss, but I don't know if you've had. Um, a journey in grief and or have talked about it on um, I think there was one friend of yours um something that happened but I, I can't recall um, um if you don't want to get into it you don't have oh to no but. you're totally fine um I I have I I'm pretty strange I feel like with emotions and kind of bringing them up because I'm very much uh for whatever reason I, I really internalize a lot of my emotions and don't really I don't really voice them very often i don't really talk and express my feelings probably as much as i should and um i don't know the reason for that like growing up my family was always pretty open about like you know discussing mental health and discussing um you know depression and and just anything kind of around that um so i don't know i don't know i've just kind of always been a little bit i don't know if shy is the word but like reserved I feel like reserved yeah. um, and not at all yeah. trying to put on like some kind of persona of like be tough or whatever. Like I've never cared for that. It's just more of sometimes I feel like I don't know what to say. So I just kind of, I kind of just get quiet. And um, as much as some, so many people don't believe off stream, I am a very, very, very shy person and I'm very, really? I very much am. Um, I don't really oh. like 98% of my talking through the day is probably just on streaming. Like when the camera goes off, I'm usually very quiet to myself. Um, so when do you, you, do you consider yourself an introvert? Oh, a hundred percent. I've always been like really? very introvert. Yeah. <laughs> Never would have thought. But it's That's so weird. Kind of what you're saying, like this whole persona when you go live, I, I totally feel that so much because it's almost like a different person kind of comes out and yeah. it's it's like still me, but it's like a part of me that I don't really see very often. So streaming for yeah. me has been huge for my mental health um both pros and cons for sure um but on the pro yeah. side of it there there's been almost like a new person that's kind of stemmed out from it so it's been it's been very impactful for me in that way yeah yeah i i was very surprised at how i took to streaming pretty quickly and it that that it kind of came very naturally to me now the technical stuff, forget it. Like the tech stuff's uh, it hard. Me, <laughs> it, it's so hard. And my audio is still a hot mess in uh, slobs. And I know I need to get off slobs. I know. Um, I actually love it's... Streamlabs. Like it kind of drives me crazy how many people just like hate on Streamlabs. Like there's some, some. so much loathing. <laughs> so much loathing. Well, um, like, but yeah, I just, I, so many people have told me, Iris, get it together, get off. 
Look at Tobias. I think Streamlabs is great for a lot of people because it's it's very user friendly when you log into it, and it's just like yeah. big red button, like go live or green like, buttons or whatever. Mm, right. Hide the things from me. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of yeah. the themes are kind of like baked into it. So to it, I think Streamlabs is great. Um, OBS yeah. does have some cool stuff, but there's even stuff like this whole podcast I'm recording. I always use Streamlabs for it because when go live if anybody follows or subs or like bits or like whatever fly um streamlabs has a cool feature where you can actually mute that from the vod so you can have like a stream version of right. it and uh like a vod version of it and obs does not have that so that was right. a, isn't that what um ziata does for for some stuff probably like exporting to yeah he yeah, has yeah, yeah. so much stuff that he does in a stream i don't even know how <laughs> his computer can handle this it is such an <laughs> Um, Maybe he has two computers. There's been some talk on your channel about setups and some folks have a dual PC rig and I'm like, man, I wish dream. I had the desk space for a second monitor, much less a, a second. Oh, do you only PC. use one monitor for streaming? Oh, how do you do that? I got to know. This is this is all the space I have just a little less than arm's length. Oh, my um, goodness. I do a lot of resizing and mm. I ignore the awkwardness of my games and overlays like and I just hope for the best. <laughs> I do a lot of window key arrow so that things auto size oh, gotcha. um, and taking like like halves and quarters of the channel. Sometimes I'll use my phone for chat if the game is like locked to be full screen yeah um i think gris is like default full screen because you want that um super immersive experience um but yeah as soon as we get another house and i've <laughs> have my own like office if i do hopefully continue streaming for years and years and years i will get a second monitor i have a second monitor i just don't have the space to put it up um and you know just just polish things up a little bit um, yeah one of the best yeah, things about that, when it comes to streaming is just like there is kind of this feeling of when you add a second monitor or get like a new microphone or kind of get a new light there's a very i don't want to say materialistic but just this like excitement of like new hardware or kind of getting a new desk yeah, it's and a new toy it's it a new totally gizmo is, totally is and don't you um, have like six monitors i only have three i only have three <laughs> but before I had my three monitors, I only used my ultra wide and I had that split up similar. It sounds like what you did on yours where I'd have game on one side, but it'd have these big like bars on top of it. So the game was only like right. this big. And then the other side right. of the monitor would have like stream labs up top and then Google on the bottom. So yeah, I only yeah. had one monitor was trying to make it work. And it's like, as long as you're having fun. And I think most people understand streaming it's not about the game. It's more about the interaction between people while Absolutely. you're also playing a game. So yeah. I didn't really care at the end of the day. It was fun to play it yeah. in small screen. It's fun to play it in a big screen, but I'm just here to talk with people. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally concur with that. Um, yeah. Kind of stemming off that, um, the second question I actually was going to ask was what got you interested in streaming, but I like how you kind of weaved in straight through that. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> another one that I did want to ask, you have had pretty tremendous growth on Twitch and only like five-ish months on the platform. What's been... A, you looked at my... Oh, God. Yeah, what, you looked at my stats. It's crazy. Um, it's what's wild. What's been like a big key to your success, would you say, during your whole journey? Watching other streamers. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I was. I wanted to make a point to mention you were the streamer that made me decide to have a full face camera for my just chatting screen. Like I remember the the moment. I'm like, Seth looks really good, and he <laughs> looks very warm and welcoming, having his big face there. Like I think I need to do that, and and that That's is what, I've, what sure. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I had more interesting crap in the background, um, like those little leaf lights. Oh. Um, I think um not to I think there there's a, a couple of things. One was I played and I've mentioned this in your channel before, like when you do a shout out or whatever, um, 
I played Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, yeah. That was like my first full game play through. And it also happened to be like my first playthrough. And because this game is so old from like 2004, there aren't a lot of folks playing this game for the first time. So I, I grabbed a lot of regulars playing this game, which I am like so tremendously thankful for because I thought that, you know, once the game was done, they were going to just like move on to another KOTOR stream. Right, but right. they didn't, they stuck around. And so thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so it was that consistency of playing the same game. I think that was helpful. Um, it just gets tough because I get bored pretty quickly. Um, and if I'm stuck, I get frustrated pretty quickly. That's the thing yeah. that I had to kind of keep in check where it's like, I died approximately 9 million times and this boss is taking me three hours. No joke, there's one boss that took me three hours to get through and it was quite embarrassing. Um, I feel this so much with so, Dark Souls. <laughs> I, and my chat loves it when I, I played Dark Souls like approximately two hours. They loved it, but I, I hate it. I hate it so much, but I'll probably do it in a, during my 24 or something just to... I did have a 24 question to too. Coming up later, coming up yeah, later. Yeah, that'll come up later. Um, I, the other thing was, you know, watching streamers and really getting involved in um, in their communities. So Argue Barmies, I think, was like one of the streamers that I you know, got to know and watch a lot and learn a lot from, from the community building aspect. He has a very engaged community and it it's a very like a very tight knit community. It's it's very I love Argue Barbies. Argue Barbies is like same. Oh, I'm not worthy. His, his and, green screen effects are truly like next level. Oh, He's amazing. I'm I DM'd him asking like, hey, so what do you do for your alerts that your mods can put up at the bottom of your screen and how do you set up the chat announcements for when vips and subs come in and chat for the first time and he was super open about all of that and yeah. i thought he would be very like no 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 this is mine it's my no, no he was like very <laughs> these are my secrets um and he he was just so open and and genuine and and thoughtful and and he's just such, such a such a blessing honestly and so i took if not outright stole <laughs> some of his like elements in his stream you know with my own twist obviously right right and i've asked and i've said hey fyi is this okay i will give you like <laughs> i'll throw bits and subs and things <laughs> as like royalties for this and he's like no no no, no go no, don't worry about it and um Pretty you know, much everybody he was the one, like copies everybody, so it, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, he was the one that got me to step up my game from a technical perspective. So that's when I invested in overlays. Like I reached out to a designer and got like a dream Pack. starting thing and and all that. Um and figuring out how to welcome, you know, regulars and, and build this like little pocket. Um, and he is also the, the type of person, um, who is like super, very welcoming and, you know, tries to make sure that everyone feels at home. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, I want to make sure that I bring that to, to my channel where it's like someone comes in and they feel like, okay, cool. Like I'm, I'm good here. Um. And I think for me, the biggest challenge in doing that is paying attention to chat and making sure I have addressed everybody, um, answered questions or responded to, to talking points and stuff like that. But sometimes it gets busy or we're playing like words on stream or something like that. And it's just like scrolling with guesses and right. I miss somebody. And yeah, that's always, that's the, the worst feeling when you miss a potential regular and it um, happens like we're only human yeah, but it, it, it happens, still yeah, sucks yeah. yeah and i think yeah. most people are understanding uh, too hopefully but yeah the the growth has been very humbling um i 
there are days where I'm like, I don't understand how this is happening. But I think a, a big part of it was, you know, making a lot of new friends and um, being present and engaging in, in their communities as well. Um, definitely, definitely not just networking. I thought that that was, at first I thought, I was very selfish. At first I thought that it was like dog eat dog, everybody for themselves. I need to be the best and I, I don't need any help. But then I realized that's not how this works. That's not how, um, I don't think that this is how anybody becomes successful unless they're like God tier at a game or they're in an esports thing. Not to knock anybody. It's just for me, lady that didn't play video games until like the last five, six years, really. Um, I needed to find some or other creative avenues and I just naturally like talking to people and getting to know people and so I, and I don't even know how I found you so that's the other thing that I've been thinking about lately with Twitch there's this serendipity to it that I find very fascinating that I'm sure lots of people wish they can bottle and sell but I don't know it's just this this magic of wow I'm here wow, I really, re this really resonates with me. And taking notes and engaging how, however you can and giving back, um, whether it's financially uh, with bits and subs and all that, um, or contributing to the conversation. Um, because I feel like uh, as a streamer that likes to focus on chat, like I love, I'm very talkative. I don't know if you've noticed, I like to talk a lot. And sometimes I'm like, oh god, I'm like the only person I'm like <laughs> the only person talking in this channel. Ah, but I feel like it's good just knowing folks who are newer at it, like it's good to have somebody to riff off of. And so you now I just talk and I figure I'm gonna have to lurk at some point, so I will shut up at some point. <laughs> and uh and and other folks can can chime in. But I, you know, it's 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 great. It's great being in these different communities and finding the parallels and the differences and being like oh that's that's really cool it's really interesting so i feel like yeah. it's it's definitely a lot better to chat more on twitch than it is to not chat at all um because yeah sometimes you go in those channels and just they're completely so focused on the game they don't pay attention to chat whatsoever um and and i'm a, i'm of the mindset like people stream for different reasons some people stream because they yeah. want to be you know the biggest streamer on the platform they want to make a career out of it they want to go to the moon with it super cool and other people like just want to play video games and they're like if i'm playing games why not streaming cool and then other people just like want right. to hang out with their friends so everybody kind of has their own reason to be on the platform but if yeah. growth is a big thing for you you have to have to have to pay attention to chat and because like chat's the whole reason most people are here so without chat we're all kind of not we're all just playing video games essentially yeah. so yeah um yeah. and then and then yeah I, I think it's just really cool how people can be so creative and take other things from people that they've seen because the whole thing you're talking about with alerts and stuff i've also thought about like green screen ideas specifically because of argue armies and super mergentroid the two of them have really cool like when you mm. sub like they come up like them themselves come up on sc screen yeah. and like wave or like <laughs> i always knew you'd be you'd come back yes. <laughs> and i'm like that's just such a, a cool original way of doing and i mean like gifts are fun and cool animations are fun but like when it's you your person and you're waving yeah. and smiling as like a green screen alert it's the best thing i love it, it it's fun it, i always laugh when uh, you know an alert like that comes up for barmies and he's wearing the same shirt <laughs> each time <laughs> yes yes it's like we know you did this all in one take <laughs> <laughs> oh, or, or when yeah, or it, when it pops up and it looks like his beard is quite a bit shorter and now oh it's uh my God. he's growing that out. He was so bright eyed and bushy tailed <laughs> until Miyazaki came and oh. then it just Love you, Barmies. <laughs> I love Barmies too. Barmies has hands down been one of the I, the the thing you were talking about earlier about just how everybody 
I don't know if it's like cross pollination is the word for it or or whatever, but like every cross pollination, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Everybody just kind of knows everybody and like you kind of meet other people from here and you're like, oh I, I saw you in that stream. That's really cool, and vice versa. That to me yeah. is hands down one of my favorite aspects about Twitch is is like it seeing is. you in a different stream and I'm like, oh Iris is here. I think this is gonna be a cool yeah, streamer like then. Like, oh, Zeph is a mod for this stream. Cool. Um, yeah, Barmies has talked about uh, Twitch as like a neighborhood and everyone has like their own spot within a borough. Right. And I have thought of like his raid outs to other you know, folks in a circle as like bar crawls. And it really does feel like a bar crawl where it's like, all right, Let's go to the next place and we and it's the same vibe sometimes it's a little different because you know every streamer brings a different flavor to uh their channel but the right. uh, the vibes and the company it's usually the same and the folks that aren't necessarily common to both like they're also pretty cool too and so you're just meeting all these really cool people um and expanding your eyes it's like a big spider web that just right branches out further and further and just like wow like when does it end um really really fascinating to think about um how endless how how um spider web like of twitch. The, yeah you yeah, the spider web of twitch and how intimate it can feel um even though the platform is ridiculously huge right and that there are literally millions of people on it mm -hmm. and yet you'll go in you lurk you realize you go back into your tab you've raided out and you're like wait i know these people but who is this right. <laughs> and then you just meet a new pocket and you just you integrate with that too it's just you really ever, really cool do you ever feel like because sometimes I, at least lately i've gotten to the point where i feel like i i i don't know uh, all the people I already know, all the streamers I've met over the year, I feel like I already I know so many people that it's almost yeah. like meeting new people feels like it's getting harder and harder because like I want to, I will always want to meet new people. I always want to meet fellow streamers, but it's almost like if I keep following all these many different streamers, I, I almost feel like I can't give as much attention to the streamers who I've already met. So do you ever feel that where it's like you kind of, want to continue expanding your horizons but you don't want to let all of your friends you know kind of go by the wayside like the balance of the two of them so, yeah it's like i don't want to neglect anybody that's the struggle right but i also i also want to give new voices a shot you know yeah. um i have found it really sometimes the algorithm for like recommended streamers sometimes it's been spot on i've met some really cool streamers from the algorithm what's people the folks coming to mind are apothic decay and kibi um very fun sweet funny uh women and sometimes it's like i don't play minecraft right i don't right. play uh you know first person shooters i I'm much more comfy puzzle, Animal Crossing. How I'm watching Barmies, who's playing Dark Souls, right. and you who are playing, I don't understand. But You're you like, make why it do people very, play these well, games where they die 10 million times? Why? <laughs> um, but you make it very, uh, you and Barmies make it very accessible and um, entertaining, to say the least. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it's. I, I need to rely, I think, a little more on word of mouth. And so you're giving me an idea to like encourage. So I have a Discord and I have a, a channel called Streamer Central where I, you know, post, you know, this is what you do if you get hate rated or, you know, um, like tips here's and some advice. tools, like, you know, tips, you know, like tips and advice. And because uh, what do I know? Um, and. What was I going to say? My thought just went poof. Tips and advice. Blah, blah, blah. But even honestly streaming for it's like done. more than a month or more than oh. like 20, 30 days, like you've already yeah. done more than 99% of people who ever touch Twitch as a streamer That's... do. So 
<laughs> recommendations, that's what I was going to say. I want to encourage folks to post rec- word of mouth so I can go and, and find new people. Um, but yeah, I find it like I know there's there's lots of like statistic tracking sites and I think it's Twitch Tracker that's like you're in the top three percent of Twitch. Oh yeah. Success. And I'm like the break doesn't make any sense, but I guess it does. Maybe that. Uh, well, most the, there's pr- probably, technically all these accounts and yeah. Yeah, probably fifty. I mean, fifty percent of them are probably just like trying it for the first time or they're just doing yeah. it for fun or you know maybe just getting started with it um which is yeah. one of those things definitely where once you get in the top one percent it's like that's where it's where like the real game is you know like the one percent and then moving up to like the point one and then the point zero one and kind of moving up there it's kind of like i always thought of it as like a professional sport like the nba or nfl or something right like a lot of people can play football and basketball, but it's that 1% that even has a shot to like really get there. And then once you're in that right. 1%, then you got to like keep moving up. So unfortunately, that's a big thing of how Twitch is. is it's it's almost like a, like a pyramid where the very top mm-hmm. sliver is where most of the viewership, most of the, the revenue, most of just like the yeah. eyeballs fall on. So, but that is, um, it almost seems like some stats I've looked up. It seems like that is changing as the, this year has gone by where some bigger streamers are moving to other platforms like youtube and twitch is still seeing a lot of movement right now especially right now yeah what do you think about all of that uh i encourage folks to exercise their agency and make that coin you know um but hmm trying to how do I how do I best articulate this? I I wanted to I had a, a question about when you brought up the pyramid and like mm. not, not the tiers, but like the levels of I'm gonna use this loosely success sure, sure. on Twitch or or popularity on Twitch. Do we wanna be there? Like in that stratospheric level of like the ninjas Almost. and Pokemon and, and yeah, then yeah, you know, like do we wanna be there? And I you know, I've expressed before on stream and off stream that I do wanna make a partner one day. I think that's a great goal to have. If anything, it just keeps me focused um on making sure that the stream is you no know, not sucky. Um but I I question, I still have to do some like real deep thinking about like, why do I want it? What af- What about after? Right. Okay, now you have the t- purple check mark. What do we do with that? Um, what responsibility do you now have on this platform with this community that um, comes with this greater, you know, recognition and attention? I'm not sure if I want to be like at that level. I feel like it's a lot of pressure. I feel like it's not, it doesn't really jive necessarily with the vibe I'm going for, which is very uh, cozy, intimate, chill, you know, nice. Could there um, be chill, but, intimate, and cozy like partner streamers though, with like a hundred, yeah. two hundred viewers? Or do you that think, I don't know? Do you think once you kind of like push past the fifty average viewers, the hundred, the two hundred, like once you're up there, something about the stream has to change to keep at that level, and maybe you're losing yeah, some I, of that intimacy? That's that's the thing I want to talk to um, one of my. Um, I consider her a role model streamer. She's a partner, Real Mama Eagle. Um, she oh, yeah. she talks a lot about mental health, and she actually does a Twitch review Thursdays. Well, she will take a queue of streamers and review your your channel, Ooh. look at your panels, and and click into a VOD and and give you feedback about your your branding and 
your your audio and stuff like that that and is so, so incredibly important because i truly feel like there are so few people who do that and and so sorry not to like jump in but like i'm so passionate yeah, yeah, about yeah. that like I feel like so many people ask their communities, ask their friends like, hey, what can I do better? I'm open for feedback, give me feedback. And so many people are scared of hurting their friends' feelings that they don't really tell them what's what should happen. Um, I think giving that feedback on, you know, maybe this could be better or that could be better, hands down one of the best things that a friend could do, being honest. He is absolutely one of the kindest people I've met on this platform and is able to deliver um feedback in a very friendly way yeah and and uh, you know too. i've seen all i've seen all kinds of channels reviewed where you know two followers no panels barely a bio it's like why are we and reviewing this like, again <laughs> so it's like what but, but she never she never says that mm -hmm. and she's always like here's an opportunity for you to tell us about yourself Tell your and story. let us know like what makes you yeah tell your story exactly and so i want to talk to her about um because she is one of the part she is a partner who frequently gets in like 100 to 200 viewers consistently but she is always on top of her chat it's i don't know what um elixir she has taken to, to be able to speed reading. to always be responsive to, to and it's not on slow mode it, it's wild um but it's a very welcoming environment um so that that that's something i will get back to you once i i talk to her because she just started a um she started taking um she set up a ko-fi coffee like the, okay, the yeah. that tipping thing and she has a subscription tier that allows for coaching. So I'm going to start oh. uh, some coaching with with Key. And I'm like super stoked and, stoked and nervous because it's like, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I hope that I, I'm just so excited to to learn from her and in this like one on one um, environment. And but I, I but and I know you probably feel the same way either you you just learn so much just sitting in a stream yes. either a stream that you like or a stream that you're like not quite feeling and you just have to ask yourself what is it that's not jiving yes. and then you know getting that on paper or as i do in private discord channels where i take notes and be <laughs> like okay this is what this is what worked for me this is what what didn't or what doesn't um jive like i like it but i couldn't pull this off i think that's like, i super... can't pull, pull off some stuff with like bar means this green screen magic <laughs> like I, no i also like you know with your setup like i like being able to show who i am with yeah yeah the things that i background that I have. But and anyway continue oh no yeah. You, um uh, yeah i think one of the best things that any af like affiliate who wants to strive for partner i feel like or even partners who maybe want to look at going from like 100 viewers to maybe like a thousand viewers like taking that next step it's such a big ask but if you can somehow connect with a fellow partner or somebody that's already done it and get some kind of mentoring or coaching behind it that can truly transform that that can take you from 20 viewers to 70 viewers or to 150 viewers and really take you there um and i think what you were saying about listening in on streams and taking notes and finding streamers who you don't jive with or you don't quite get along or you're like i don't know if i like this stream one of the worst things I, I feel that some people do is they just completely exit out of the stream and move on to the next one. I think it's really mature and and self self what's the word like self reflective when you look in and ask like why don't I like the stream like me this person has 10,000 viewers obviously they're doing something well obviously they've connected mm -hmm. and done something successfully so why is it not connecting with me and I think being able to move past aspects you don't like, but still understand how they've made that success. Why it works. Like the first time, honestly, I saw, I watched a Poke mainstream. I just didn't get it. I'm like, why is Poke, <laughs> like, why do people love Poke so much? I just really didn't get it. And then 
I, instead of just exiting out, I was like, I want to watch a little bit more. I want to try to see, kind of see where that success is, like how her, she's built her community. And then I went on a whole, like just learning as much I could about her and other of those big streamers and their, their stories where they started. And the thing that's kind of tough though, for a lot of those streamers is they started so young with Twitch, like right when Twitch just started. So they're like some of the first ones. No, <laughs> right, right. I'm so jealous. So, so it's hard to like take advice from somebody who was, who had success at the in right like a, place at the right time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Or when you talk to and people, sometimes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Go oh, no, no, no. But I'll like, chime in. It would be like if you ask somebody who, you know, invested in Bitcoin at a hundred dollars when Bitcoin was a hundred dollars, they're like, How did you do it? You know, different environment, different yeah. time, all of that. Sorry, what were you saying? And in other scenarios, they brought over an existing audience from like Mixer or YouTube. Um, a YouTube or something. And it's like, Well, of course you made partners, silly. Like right. <laughs> <laughs> you you had the numbers with you not to say that they don't deserve by any means mm -hmm. but you know there there is like a boost that you get versus right. what's twitch <laughs> and then and and figuring it out on the fly as as i have since since late february or early march um i honestly feel like youtube is, is youtube honestly is like the cheat code when it comes to twitch like making good yeah. youtube content <laughs> In my opinion, I feel like making good YouTube content is possibly even harder than streaming on Twitch. But if you can take that time, yeah. maybe instead of stream five days a week, you could stream like two days a week and just put that other three days into making good quality YouTube content that can that can bring people over to Twitch faster than if you did stream like five days a week. But that's, well, what on YouTube? That's the tough that's part. That's what I'm trying to that's what i'm trying to figure out it, it, it would have to be some kind of educational thing where i talk about something i have very very deep knowledge of and what's coming to mind is publishing my background is in digital book publishing and and uh, i was an ebook developer for for a Ooh, couple of cool. years uh, yeah it's 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 weird it's like being a a baby web developer so imagine like your nook your Kindle is a browser, but the browser is from like 2007. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> you're writing and you're writing a web page and coding a web page for a browser from 2007 and, you know, the 2010s, 20, 20. But anyway. Um, it's crazy going back and going seeing with, like yeah. those old, like you, what YouTube looked like in 2007. Have you seen those websites? Like the time machine ones yeah. or like Facebook yeah. in 2007? Yeah. I love the Wayback Machine. It's 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 great to be looking through time and being like, wow, look at those fonts. Right. Look at that navigation. It's so awful. Or the ah, algorithm thank you. Took over. I remember those. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I don't know what exactly because I'm so focused on chat interaction and like community stuff. Like, I don't exactly know what and I'm not good at games. That's the other thing. I'm not very good at these video games. Um so I guess it would be either something around art or um, something around publishing or frankly, maybe grief. I don't know, um, since it's so personal and I don't want to, you know, posit like opinions as fact because it's such mm. a nuanced personal thing. Right. It's something I that I've thought about and, you know, uh, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with um, what's his, what's his name? Uh, LJ of stream scheme, oh, like yep, he's talked LJ. a lot. He's he's almost like required textbook reading for starting on Twitch. It, it Him and Alpha like, Gaming. Um, I mean, there's a couple. There's a yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, they all say to some extent, like YouTube has better discoverability. Yeah. And it's better. It's a it's a very good funnel. But uh, that's one thing that's kind of stumped me. And I'll throw a DM at you, I guess, um, <laughs> for what to what can i package in small snippets that could live here i also just i've seen youtube comments and i just i don't want to be associated with that part of youtube not that anything i would say would bring over those folks um I, hopefully I mean, I'll but definitely you know, say... youtube to me is a little scary yeah i mean youtube chat and youtube comments i feel like they're very similar to twitch chat where 
so many people I've talked to about streaming on Twitch, they're like scared of Twitch chat. They're scared of people calling them names or going live and like people are, I mean, I guess it's a little different now with all the hate raids and stuff going on, but like normally chat is like really, really good and stuff. And it, there will be that one percent, you know, there will be that asshole who pops in and says mean stuff and, and everything. But I always I've always felt like they want a reaction. They want to say something uncomfortable yeah. and make you like freak out or internalize it or get like really upset about it. Um, a big thing for me has always been whenever there's any troll stuff like that, delete it, ban it, move on. Don't even give them the time of day. Just be like, OK, delete, ban anyways that's what they have um, to work on i'll just like vent about the person for yeah. i don't know but they want that to... they want the reaction they want iris to be like why did they say this you can't give them that power <laughs> yeah i know it, it's just wild what some people say they don't even know you that. like they don't know you they don't know who no. you are as a person they don't know your value your worth you the person behind the streamer so if they come in and say anything hateful or negative it's just empty words from an empty person that mean absolutely nothing i had a covid denier come into my stream once flat earthers wild <laughs> like in the same I, just, I just learned my husband one of his old old friends yeah. is a flat earther he, he discovered i'm just like what so, I will say, you know. I will say with stuff like that, I think a big pr part of conspiracy theories and stuff like that is probably the YouTube algorithm and the rabbit hole because people are very easy to persuade. Some people are very easy to persuade. And if they watch a, a 40 minute YouTube video from somebody with a million subscribers that has like real good convincing evidence that COVID was fake or the earth is flat or we didn't land on the moon or whatever, like it, it can convince some people. And I love that conspiracy theory. Yeah. Mm. I, I always I don't know I've always tried to give people the benefit of the doubt with stuff like that and just be like you don't know what you don't know it's when yeah. you try to talk to them and they just turn off like their brain and they don't want to have any kind of factual conversation that's where the frustration yeah. really sets in for me yeah I I don't have the, the patience patience or the <laughs> or the emotional bandwidth frankly to tell someone like no the thing that killed my mom existed like it's just like no i'm not gonna uh -uh, nah. you're right ban, ban and move on but right. yeah I, I i i get wound up very quickly and i'm like you're giving me a pitchfork <laughs> um something else i gotta Real. i mean i think but being open and and kind of what you're talking about earlier about being like transparent with chad and transparent with your audience and yourself like i feel like that's such a good thing though because some people sometimes on twitch you can tell they have like such a tight filter and it's almost like they're they want to say stuff but they don't say stuff because they're like calculating yeah. in their head and they're like you know if i say this it could go this way and they almost just I, I will definitely admit when i first started streaming i was probably more like that where i was very much staying away from heated topics or discussions or like mm -hmm. not swearing at all and i guess just as i've done more of it i'm like you know what i think it's more important to be maybe not a hundred percent transparent because we all got to have some filter and yeah. barrier but like it, it's better to be 98 percent than be like 50 percent. you know like people yeah yeah e even if you turn some people off with who you are as a person or how you talk or whatever it's better to just be your truthful honest self and some people will gravitate away but some people will stay and they'll stay even harder yeah. because you talked about something political that they absolutely agree with and they're like you know what iris isn't just a streamer i like her as even more more than a streamer now like i'm definitely going to be a regular now and it, it just kind of pushes some people away and creates stronger connections with others but i totally understand yeah. why some people don't want to go into those heated conversations Absolutely, it's a boundary thing right and i respect folks that keep boundaries um it's good to have boundaries with people on the internet yes. um and that's something that i you know wrestle in my head every day where you know I do think that when I am like, let me, let me back up a little bit. I've been re as I've, as the growth has kind of went pow. Yeah. Um, I realize I have to be more mindful with my words and, and kind of like take a minute before I 
say things because it's then it's on the VOD unless I unpublish it. But even then, you could probably find it somewhere. Um, some filter, right? Is, yeah. Yeah. I need to have some filter or at least at the very least, like take the take the opinion and, and kind of like sit with it for a little bit and mm. then you know, come back um, with a little bit more clarity. Because when you're like in the moment, like you don't know what you're right. going to say. Right. And, you know, I, th there are things that I have regret, regretted saying on stream that I'm like, I didn't mean it that way, but you know, it doesn't matter. The, the, the impact is there. The impact has happened and you just got to move on. So I've been having really intense, uh, mental conversations of like, what does it mean to have a platform? What does it mean to be responsible for a community what does it mean when you know people look up to you and 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 pay attention to what you say and call you out when you say nonsense that needs to be clarified a little bit more um, right there was another point i was i was thinking about but it's 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 gone now it went poof so this kind of conversation is fantastic okay um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of kernels and food for thought that I think uh, I will definitely be, be thinking about something that's always like really fascinated me that when I was working at my job and kind of going through management training and everything, we were talking, learning about communication and how you can say one thing and you can perceive it yeah. one way and someone else can hear those Styles exact communication. Words. Yep. And perceive it completely <laughs> different. So that's always something that's kind of lingered with me. And I'm also of the sense like people are always going to say stupid stuff and, and people sometimes like the filter just slips and people are just people are just people We make mistakes. And I think it's important yeah. to not hold someone accountable for like their worst moment of their life and you'll never grow past that. I think it's really yeah. important that everybody grows. It's good to it's good to make mistakes. It's good to be honest about them and say I made a mistake. I said something and I've reflected on it and learned from it and I'm a better person now because of going through that. Um so I, I think people need to be more understanding of just the mistakes that people make and and people need to for, to be humble themselves and say, you know what? I said something or did something that was incorrect and you know, there will be consequences with it and I uh, I'm fine with the consequences. I'm humble and I'm going to move on and learn from it. I almost kind of feel like yeah. sometimes as a society, we're so, we're so eager to call people out on Twitter and to get, you know, the, some of the, I don't know, yeah. the, like the cancel culture. Sometimes really I struggle yeah. with. When I've been thinking a lot about cancel culture as of late, not that I'm canceled or anything, <laughs> but now that there's this, like being on Twitch is very public. And yes. so it's something that you just have to think about. Like now I have to think about, okay, like I have this platform and now I need to be very, um, I need to uh, have plenty of intent. Like I can't just be glib. I can't just rattle things off uh, as they come into my head. Like I need yeah. to think about it before I put it out into the world because you don't know who's paying attention it's and twitch vulnerable. is a big place it's yeah yeah you have to be very very vulnerable and, and and i'm trying to you know remember like no i'm not perfect not that that's an excuse per se but like i'm not perfect this won't uh, whatever i slip up like this it's not going to be the last time i slip up right um you know as long and, as you learn from it and grow from it and uh, get better. Yeah. 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 But um, I can't, can't necessarily dwell on it for a million years because that's not productive either. Right. Um, but yeah. 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 Live streaming is interesting because we're so vulnerable and out there for anybody on the internet to just watch. And it's not like a YouTube video where it's 10 minutes and it's cut up here and there and it's all edited perfectly. It's like very barren out there or very bare out there. Yeah. Um, where if you're live for two, three, four, five, tw 12 hours, 24 hours, there is so much stuff that's going to come Ooh. out of your mouth. It's it, somebody's that, going yeah. to say something or, or something's going to slip. And yeah, I think as long as people it comes on both parts like 
people out there need to understand that people are going to make mistakes but we need to be aware when somebody does and, and to have our ears open for them for an apology or a reconciliation or just trying to trying to understand what was learned from it yeah kind of going down a whole whole rabbit hole there of that but like I'm, I'm very, you're not kidding man i'm passionate i'm honestly very passionate about cancel culture like i think it does more harm than good a lot of the times and i think that I just don't like seeing people, especially on Twitter, just really destroy people for having a different opinion sometimes, or maybe not necessarily agreeing a hundred percent with somebody. And I'm very, I'm very open about free speech. Like I, I want people to have discourse and to, to have yeah. debates and to discuss things. And, you know, I think it's really important, especially now, like so many people are in these echo chambers politically, religiously, just in the world. They're just in these echo chambers and they only hear what they want to hear. And I think it's really important to listen to people that you might really disagree with and try yeah. to not be married to ideas, to try to be open to possibly having your opinion changed, you know, if the facts and the evidence presented are, are applicable. So yeah. It's a crazy Keyword world right facts. now. Facts. And evidence. Real facts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, real facts, science facts, facts that have Show been tested seats. multiple yeah. times. Exactly. Yeah, especially <laughs> now, I mean, it almost feels like people can't have a discussion about anything because people have two different set of no. facts. And if we can't even agree on the right. facts in the middle, there's like no conversation and, to be had. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy Ugh. times. <laughs> it is crazy times. But I will say thanks elections anyway. I, I will say most people <laughs> I've talked to about stuff like this are pretty similar though in that regard. Like they most people do want to have their ears open and do want to listen and do want to have conversations and you know it's are are at least open to different perspectives. So um yeah, but yeah when you go into conversation sorry, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, you no, know, I think I'm I'm open to an extent. Um because there is a lot of labor, emotional labor that comes with those kinds of discourses. And frankly, yeah. like, I, I am just very tired of leading, trying to lead people to, to water, you know, right. like at some point, either get it together <laughs> or we just agree to disagree. And then right. that's that. Like, you know, I... I um I agree with this sentiment. I just there are times where it's like at what cost, you know? Like there there to me there's like a limit. Like not necessarily mm -hmm. like three strikes and that's it, but I know that I have had interactions where I know it's going nowhere. This is sunk time for my mental health sake i need to just move on and, and yeah. let it go and sometimes it and sometimes that stems into i'm just not going to engage in this period which i guess some folks can read as an echo chamber but you know i gotta stay sane like i yeah. cannot i i you know and i know i have folks on facebook who aren't wearing masks who aren't taking delta seriously um i just learned today that my mother-in-law's best friend passed from covid and she was in her 50s and it's like i can't in like right i've had conversations where it's like okay we're not even in the same book much less right. the same page so until you can like i have tried to meet you where you are you gotta meet me where i am this yes. just reminds me of the discourse from the last election uh, in the united states where you know there was this call from folks for the liberals to reach out to not to get into politics for liberals to reach out to trump supporters and, and understand where they're coming from it's like well where were they in 2016 um anywho i can like go on about this for days but it's 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 a it's a wild time and the internet doesn't it makes things easier, but also makes things very, very harder. Um, yeah. And you just got, at the end of the day, it's all about balance. I've been thinking a lot about balance. Balance with my streaming versus my work. Balance with my time and my energy versus, you know, other things that I need to 
devote time to like my health my husband my my dog um things like that and you know finding balance between um in in discourse where i'm exposed to contrary opinions that also has to come out of balance like i can't just inundate myself with opposing views right. because then I'm just going to lose it. Like then I'm just going to be like, why am I doing this to myself? So, but yeah, I, I encourage anybody to, you know, explore and reach out to, to somebody who may be, uh, who may hold different viewpoints, but you know, you know, you're yourself best and right. you're going to do what you got to do to take care of yourself. And that's all that I can ask anybody, please take care of yourself, especially now. We're, we're all burnt out from yeah. the past, you know, 18, 19 plus months and no end in sight. <laughs> so anyway, happy topic, Zev. Right, right. <laughs> I think what you're saying, though, about like like reaching out, though, uh, if, if anything, just to kind of wrap all this kind of stuff up, I, I do agree that you have to be willing to reach out your hand but if somebody isn't there to reach out their hand and to have a middle ground to come to, then, I mean, you're doing your part and they're not doing theirs. So yeah. I, I totally see how if you reach out your hand so many times and it keeps getting burnt over and over, it's like, why do I keep doing this? But there are some people right. out there who will reach back. Not everybody, definitely not everybody, uh, yeah. but there will be some people who reach back and want to have a conversation, want to hear your kind of side of things and hear their side of things. And, uh, I definitely have learned over the past, I mean, ever since like 2016, so many people just really feel like they're not being heard. So even if you just like right. sit down and I'm, I'm even just saying this for like myself, but like sit down with somebody who has very different ideas. And as long as they're willing to come in the middle and talk and, and just be like, all right, tell me, tell me what you think. I'll let you go for however long my ears are open. Tell me how you really think. People, you can have really interesting conversations with some people, but it is time consuming and it is mentally consuming. And it's, you know, not after a long day at work and streaming and, and spending time with family. It's like, do I really want to yeah. get on Twitter and debate this person? I don't know for an hour. Maybe not quite today. <laughs> so I That's totally what the coffee's for, Seth. That. that is definitely what the coffee's <laughs> for. I'm having the wrong coffee. <laughs> um, I guess kind of like, veering all the way back to some of the one of the questions i did have um see this is my favorite thing about doing the podcast though like wherever we go down these rabbit holes i'm always yeah. open for it so um one question i did want to ask since it is a channel point redemption of yours what's been your best dramatic reading so far I saw that's that on there. Fantastic. I'm like, I got it. I got to ask this one. You did your homework, Zeb. <laughs> um, so the dramatic reading point redemption is when I use voices and other. It's mostly voices. Uh, when I am in a game and I'm talking to like an NPC, and mm -hmm. so I'm reading their dialogue, and then I just give the characters different voices or whatever. Um, I did a really knockout job. In hollow night as of late um for one of the uh, one of the bugs and uh i want to say dirtmouth like it was pretty early on but it was just a couple of days ago where some a uh, regular of the saxophonist stream came to my stream and redeemed it and then posted a link to a poem called the chaos which i was like mm. oh like duh like the chaos like the wholesome chaos i'm trying to create in my channel for her um and it's a poem that's um it, it lists lots of words in the english language that are um either sound like the saw, same saw, but are saw. spelled differently yeah like corpse core horse worse and so they redeemed it and they're like this but use like an old timey radio voice and i was <laughs> rightly rightfully called out for saying yeah shay every like six seconds <laughs> and calling that my old timey yes. radio voice but reading this bizarre poem i just pulled it up where it's like 
Pray, console your loving poet. Make my coat look new, dear. Sew it. Just compare heart, hear, and heard. Dies and diet, lord and word. But this poem is freaking long. Yeah. So I did like five or six stanzas. And chat like started using highlight message like Iris scroll down and it's literally like I don't it's very long very and I was long prepared poem. to I was prepared to do the whole thing and I'm like oh wait no 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 there's like at least a hundred stanzas here no Holy we would be going God. on so I'm tempted to make a community challenge where I will do the whole poem that could be cool if they like, but they need to raise like a lot of points. Um, you could do that. And I'm that. behind on another community challenge. Yeah. You, you could do that and maybe make like a YouTube video out of it. Could be a good like YouTube video. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> My dignity. <laughs> oh, but we can all laugh at ourselves. That was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's something I will. I will actually let me make a note of that in my invisible Discord channel of <laughs> notes. Uh, YouTube video question mark the one of, chaos uh, reading <laughs> one thing I've, I've been listening to a lot of of like Ludwig as a streamer and one thing he does that's super intriguing with me is he actually plans his YouTube content to do while he's live streaming so he'll do oh, that's smart yeah and then he takes that chunk of like 30 minutes edits it into like 15 minutes thumbnail title and then that's it and i'm like that's, that's wow. a really smart way because i know um like yourself me a lot of people will do like just chatting in the very beginning of the stream and then we'll dive yeah. into the game after like half hour or an hour or something so using okay. that time and having some kind of i don't know tear maker of something funny or reacting or um could be a really cool way to just kind of you know two birds with one stone kind of mentality yeah yeah yeah, I got it. I've been thinking about like streaming like a long just chatting where I'm just planning. Yeah. And I'm like making notes, working in Canva for uh social media posts, uh figuring out games and just like having my windows float around and and letting folks watch the process. It's probably not going to be that engaging but there may be other folks particularly streamers that may be interested in like watching that process play out because i do take lots of notes and i still haven't nailed down like the right um process like i've tried mm -hmm. google docs didn't work i tried a notebook didn't work discord it's kind of working but there are times where you know i just i fall out of sync and then it's like well everything i planned is out the window anyway um or then something happens and it's like oh wait it's i forgot this is the day that i have planned to do this so i gotta so i haven't hit the that groove yet of like yeah i i have this post ready to go i have this now i'm finally starting to get like okay i need a go live message i need my discord announcement i need the tweet that i will tweet before i go live the tweet that Streamlabs automatically tweets it's a lot the goal live notification yeah. the title like it do you have it's a, a lot do you, have, do you have a bot in your no, discord no, that announces you going live yes oh, yeah okay. i use a me six for yeah. for the the goal lives or no no no, no. lies i use stream cord for my goal oh. lives for both myself okay. and folks that uh also stream where it posts like I have my own dedicated go live channel mm -hmm. and then uh I have a channel called uh promote yourself where it's just the go lives and I know you asked the question on Twitter where it's like gonna say, yeah. what are your thoughts on on self promotion in your discords and I just let I just add them to the stream cord list and that way they're not like they can they have no control over what gets posted it's just like hey you're live and right. that's it not Hey y'all, because I don't know what they're gonna say mm. um, or advertise. Um, so if people want to see them because they're alive, then they just click and, and that's it. Um, yeah, that was an int really fascinating thread to read through. Like I got a lot of people commenting yeah. on that, and I was really happy for it because like just hearing, yeah. it, it seemed like there was quite a, a split. Like some people 
some people were just not into self-promotion oh, no. in their discord and i mean i get where they're coming from like it's it's their discord for their community and they want to build it for them and not like them individually but like them as a community so i totally get that and then i get the other side where someone made a good point where it's like if you don't have a self-promotion center people are just natural or maybe subconsciously going to self-promote something like in general chat and just be like, Hey, I'm can't wait for my 24 hour stream tomorrow. And then that, if it's really intense can get heated and, you know, get yeah. deleted messages. So it's like, Hmm, yes. which to do, which to do. So drama. Yeah. 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 Cause it's especially with Twitch etiquette. Like there really is such a thing as just good Twitch etiquette. And like, you don't ever want to come off, as appearing as like look at me look yeah. at me i'm streaming or like hey i'm gonna go and go watch this other streamer or i'm going live right now like there is I, there's like an unspoken for, rule yeah i mod for sax's channel and i felt bad saying like after the fact like okay i gotta go get ready to talk to zeph in an hour and i'm like wait oh you idiot <laughs> i don't think sex cared either. right like, like it's it it there's a difference between you know heads up and and also having a rapport with the the streamer that in the channel that you're in versus right. hey can you give me a follow or hey right. i'm trying to get to affiliate like can you raid me please like, <laughs> balance yeah yeah it's oh, so true no. and, and i feel like most no. people are are it's different when it's somebody like you're really good friends with or you really know like like if we're chatting and then you're like hey i'm gonna go get ready to you know start my own stream or something like that like we all I know what you mean. You know what you mean. We know there's no Ill will, Ill will towards it, but it's when there's like somebody brand new who's never been there before, and they're just like, "Hey, I'm. Hey, man, what's up? Can you raid me? Or, or I'm almost at affiliate. Can you help yeah. me out? It's like, who are you again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Cause yeah, I've called out at least one person in a friend's channel for doing that. I and that was very tactful. I was like, FYI, like it's a considered bad etiquette to come into a stream and just ask for a follow or right. something like that because you know it's about cultivating community and, and stuff like that but yeah but you've been very welcoming of streamer like content and streamer like questions and that's always been i've always found that very refreshing because i feel like with something as with a platform as competitive as twitch that folks would want to keep their secrets or whatever close to the vest and not share it with the world for fear that someone is going to jump ahead of them but you know at the end of the day like there's always going to be someone ahead of you right like no matter what right. and you're gonna there's gonna come a time where someone you've mentored and frankly i i would be proud like if someone i have uh mentored or have helped streaming surpasses me in some capacity they're gonna get some sponsorship they get that purple check mark they get more followers or whatever like i'd be so happy right uh, and, I, and i frankly believe that there's plenty of twitch for everybody and you know and i've said this before either in your stream or in other streams or somewhere on my stream that everyone's definition of success on twitch is different like going to your point about like if you just want to hang out with your friends like for the folks that are serious about twitch as like a career or like a a, a trajectory to, to focus on like success is gonna look different to one person which could be i want a consistent and busy chat right. i think it was i think it was suits i was talking with suits or he was in another chat where he's like i just want a busy chat i don't need a lot of followers i just want a chat that that's super engaged and that keeps going right for others it's i want to hit ten thousand followers i want that purple check mark i want you know this sponsorship i have not figured out what those benchmarks are for me yet purple check mark is in there but i that's that's a very like superficial goal at, on some levels and i need to like dig a little deeper it's like why it's it can't just be for the clout the cloud's nice, but there, there, there's so many more layers to what being a partner on Twitch means. And I frankly need to follow more partnered streamers and, you know, kind of have those conversations about like, 
what are the challenges around this? Like, what are compromises that you may have had to make as a streamer to put yourself in this arena? Because I imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you probably know more about, like, the Twitch politics than I do. Like, there's probably some streamers that, like, maybe they need to be more family friendly in order to get that uh, partnership because they are going to appeal to a broader audience. Uh, and so that widens the revenue pool or whatever. I don't know. Like, I have no idea. So that's, that's like more homework that I have to do as a baby streamer um, if I do want to, like, grow in that capacity. But I'm sure there are folks who are like, I don't care. I don't want to... I don't even want affiliate because then I'm locked to Twitch and I'd right. like to bring my brand to all kinds of platforms. And that's something else to, to rightfully kind consider. So as well. Yeah. It, it's, it's, I mean, there's definitely such a thing as being like a brand risk for sure. And I think it's more so for like sponsorships where the family friendly kind of comes in. Um, cause I, I mean, I've seen Twitch partner people who are, are very very vulgar and very lewd sometimes and i mean arguably the biggest or one of the biggest streamers amaranth she does um very suggestive oh, yeah. content on stream so but yeah i think it's it's <laughs> right um one of somebody I, I follow a lot who i really love uh gary v i don't know if you know who he is but he talks mm -mm. he's that rings a bell that name rings a bell. He's like a, yeah, a social media influencer who owns like a lot of different businesses. He's very business oriented, um, but he's given the advice before because he swears a lot. And some people have asked him like, why do you swear so much? You're turning off like some brands and some people from even like getting to the core of your content. And he's just made the statement like, it's who I honestly am. It's just what it's like, how I talk it's who i am it's the true me and if that's going to push away some people so be it and there is some give and take like if you're swearing constantly but you're successful maybe other people should try to look push past towards that kind of what i was talking about earlier with like pokimane and and some of those top tier yeah. streamers like it's on the duty of others as well to be able to push past that to see the good content inside um because otherwise they're just you know they're not gonna they're gonna miss a lot yeah you know they're gonna miss a lot for sure um you don't curse a lot on your channel though i more recently i've been especially with dark souls <laughs> more recently especially <laughs> with dark souls i've been i've been swearing a little bit more but i mean i do have some filter on for sure um not that i really care about swearing whatsoever um because i mean honestly off stream i swear i do swear quite a bit um but yeah, I just try to keep it not family friendly per se, but PG thirteen. Yeah, I mean even even sometimes rated R because we go into some dark territories <laughs> or into some very lewd conversations sometimes. But like, I don't know. I try to I keep that like ninety five percent filter, you know, a little bit, a little bit on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think it is just more important to be yourself and whoever that is whether it is swearing or not swearing um because i've had conversations with like mr dandy and he has said he subconsciously has made the attempt to not swear whatsoever on stream because he does want to oh, have yeah. more of that kind of family friendly appeal um and he just yeah for whatever opinion or for whatever reasons doesn't want to and i think that's awesome and i think when you look in the mirror and you ask yourself that and you can give an honest answer i think whatever that answer is is the right answer for you you know when you yeah. look in the mirror and say what kind of person am i and whatever that I, truthful answer is that's yeah. the right one i enjoy cursing it's it's, it's part of who I am. My my mom cursed like a sailor. And she hated it when I was cursing. She was like, "Why? Why are you taking after me?" I'm like, "Because it's fun." And she's like, "I'm the, was I was the only person in my friend group that cursed," and, and I'm like, "Yeah, it's it's fine. So am I." <laughs> if I'm being honest, I've always felt like cursing is like spice. It's like seasoning for words. Too much of it can totally ruin a dish and make it terrible not enough of it and you're like i feel like i just i need more from this person so i've always felt yeah. like like swearing and cursing it's like a seasoning for words yeah, yeah. and sometimes it just makes a good point a seasoning you, for words <laughs> sometimes it just makes the point you know i don't think there's anybody really out there who is ducking excited or whatever whatever the autocorrect yeah. is 
<laughs> ducking. Yeah, I'm like, Apple, I don't mean ducking. I never mean ducking. Ever, Nobody ever, means ever. ducking. Ever. Not um, even if I'm on a battlefield for paintball. I'm not I'm not ducking. Right. <laughs> right, right. Um one question though, I we kind of alluded to it earlier, so I do want to touch on it. I am curious, what is this October 24 hour seeing stream you're planning on doing Damn as it. part of your Diva Time <laughs> channel point and redemption? Oh, yeah. So yeah, October 8th. So some background. Um I had a charity stream in July on the one year anniversary of my mother's death to raise money for uh, the CDC Foundation. So they have like a um, a campaign, I think it's called Crush COVID. And this campaign is all about uh, raising funds for facilitating vaccination efforts. So like putting people on the ground to increase trustworthiness within communities for to encourage folks to take the vaccine funding for PPE, um, tracking COVID-19 variants, stuff like that. So I, th I think my initial goal was like 300 bucks. I'm like, I know we'll probably hit it, but I want to like, you know, start small. And if it goes, it goes. And I don't know why I thought of this, but I said at some point during the stream, I guess halfway through, um, if we break a thousand dollars, I will do a 24 hour stream. Oh yeah. And that was I was like 18 minutes left and I looked at the the time and I was like okay 18 minutes left 24 hour stream isn't happening we're not there yet it was like at 800 something I'm like okay I'm good because I didn't want to do a 20 hour right, right. <laughs> stream I was like oh like, no I was so sure I was not going to break a thousand dollars but guess what my father-in-law saw my link on Facebook and donated $250 not knowing that there were milestones that I had to hit <laughs> and we crossed a thousand dollars with 15 minutes left in oh the street <laughs> and so um it's happening and I picked I it, it I need to like get the time off approved and stuff but it's happening October 8th uh I used to be in my high school choir um I'm a mezzo soprano I'm really out of practice and um Diva time is meant to be like my moment to have my Linda Belcher uh, 10 seconds where I just belt things and sing. Um, and there are times on stream where I'll just start to sing randomly. La, la, la. And um, there's a song from a musical that I want to sing on stream, of course, to fill the 24 hours. But the um, the notes are very, very high. And I don't think I can sing them here because I'm running a utility that has a noise gate and mm. it thinks that the note I hit is noise and I, I just cut out. That high of a note? Um, it's very high. I don't know exactly what the note is. I want to say it's a, I want to say it's an E, a high E or, or an A. Um, and it's, 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 it's up there. It's a, it's a song in Italian from... Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Repo, the genetic opera. Um, I have not. But it's a, it's a song. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a woman is singing about, um, uh, you know, plight and doom. And then she, uh, she, she does something very, very painful um, to her face, which I'm not going to spoil because um, it's kind of a critical part of the film. Gotcha. gotcha. And so the, the, the song is, is hard. Um, so right now I'm just practicing hitting the notes. I'm not even like saying the words because um, it's very operatic. So it's just working the diaphragm yeah. um, and, and and getting the, the notes out. But until then, I need to stop drinking coffee <laughs> and soda and for tea. start drinking tea and water so that my voice is a little bit less rough around the edges. And yeah. that'll make the singing easier anyway but i also need to figure out my mic situation too um because when i don't have the utility and the ac is running then it's just like a disaster so more baby streamer thingies that i need to work on in terms of getting my stuff 
together. I'll be honest. <laughs> on, um, it feels like slobs. it feels like the tech stuff never ends. Even a year, two years, no, five years don't down say the road, that. you no. get better though at like troubleshooting for sure. But like, there's always going to be something. You're just like, why is this happening? Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a lot of facets yeah, to what, streaming. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wish me luck. I don't know if you've Definitely. ever done a 24, but I'm I've not. been hitting folks up and be like, hey, what do I do? Why am I doing this? I will say and, um, when it comes yeah. to 24 hour streams, there's no one better I would recommend to look at than Happy Pigs. Um, do you know who Happy Pigs is? So I just discovered Happy Pigs and I read his bio. I'm like, oh, like I think it was the algorithm that suggested me. <laughs> I'm guessing because a lot of my friends follow him and I read his bio and he's like, yeah, I'm that dude that does a weekly 24 hour stream. I'm like, yes. what? <laughs> yes. How old are you? And then I like checked my birthday and I'm like, oh no, I no. <laughs> every single week he I, I think he's missed a few here and there, wild. but like every single week he does a 24 hour stream and he's so smart about it, I think, where he has like he'll have like events every three or four hours so it'll be like these four hours we're going to play this game and then this four hours we're going to play this game and then we'll do like an hour of just chatting um he even has like a shower section where like there's this little emote that's showering and people and like people are playing uh words on stream automatically and then he, while he's taking a shower so he's if you're doing 24 hour and you've never done one before i've never done one before but if i was going to i would I would definitely study Happy Pigs. He's the champ when it comes would to that. You, would you ever consider doing a 24? Or you're like, no, this is not this is um, not a thing. I'm not doing this. I've done a I've done a couple 12 hours before and those were really tough for me. Um I I don't know. I have really difficult time like having a very sharp focus. My mind does start to wander a lot, and I just feel like I just get drained of mental juice to where like probably like six hours is the most I could realistically go where I'm like fully there. Um, I always, I've said in the past before, you know, if the day ever comes where we hit partner, maybe, maybe I'd consider it for something like that. But like, yeah. but I don't know. I, I feel like if I was going to do it, I would just like leave the camera on and just kind of try to do my normal day stuff and maybe edit some videos while streaming. Maybe I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot. Kind of going back to that idea of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. is a lot. I'm, uh, I'm frankly very terrified. I, for like the first month where I was like, oh God, this is happening. I have to do this. Is this happening? And, uh, sex would always remind me. <laughs> it's like, like hey, every don't time forget. you pop in, it's like, hey, 24 hour Iris. Hey. It's like, oh my God. Stop. <laughs> see, you'll see like the, the runtime and be like, oh my you only have 18 hours left i'm like stop it this is not happening um <laughs> but yeah I have, to, I have a spreadsheet i have a list of games that i can play i just need to figure out what to play when because hmm. i figure i shouldn't be playing gris at 4 a.m because <laughs> then i will want to take a nap <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, just and finding other ways to just like passively fill up the time whether it's like watching youtube videos or just so that. that i can rest my voice yeah yeah the meme reviews or whatever that sax watches are ridiculous and i love them so much <laughs> the wendy's stuff is just <laughs> um <laughs> i i will definitely say though i one of my good friends king fink he did a 24-hour stream and he just played final fantasy 7 and was very much not having it with that so i would definitely recommend to not do one single game to have like some variety thrown in there for like different games because 24 hours of one single game is they just played one burnout. game yeah just one game for 24 hours i could maybe try to play like a game to completion within eight hours like aim to get it done within eight hours right um I know I wasn't there for all of his, all of the stream, but Jolly Green Carl just did a 24 and yeah. he played the new Psychonauts 2. I'm Ooh. assuming he beat it if he was streaming for 24 hours. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, I was actually thinking about playing Uncharted. Ooh, which one? Are the 24? Four. Uncharted oh, 4. Yeah. Um, cause I, be I haven't my favorite finished one. it. Like, I love Uncharted. It's just, so good i totally so agree 
I'm, I'm torn um, as to then, like what my favorite PlayStation game is uh, on the PS4. I'm like, I don't know if I'd say <sighs> God of War or Bloodborne or Uncharted 4 because like Uncharted 4 is just, it is like Indiana Charged Jones, but maybe very better. Good. Yeah, yeah. I love the, I just love the puzzle aspect to it and just really, really fun mechanics. Um, I call Jedi Fallen Order Uncharted with Star Wars. Yeah, because I find the, the mechanics very similar and, you know, there's always like a little bit of puzzle solving, but really, really cool combat and cutscenes and stuff like that. Is that the one um, that's kind of like Dark Souls a little bit? Like people say it's similar to Dark Souls. I don't understand that comparison, but yes, I want to say yes. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, I guess if you're in Grandmaster mode, yes. <laughs> Oh, does it have difficulty it's a little... levels? Yeah, gotcha. there's like story mode, which is what I did the first time, and no I'm doing shame. a second playthrough. Yeah, no shame. I'm doing a second playthrough on the next level up because I tried to do two levels up. It's not working, so I bumped it because I I tend to get very frustrated, mm. and frustrated Iris on stream is not really fun to watch. So I just I just said screw it, I'm bumping it down. Yeah, for the sake of my chat and the stream. Um. And then, so I think it's, uh, let's see, story mode, Jedi something, Jedi Master, Je Jedi Knight, Jedi Master, and Grand Master. That's cool how I they're know like a handful the, of people. the ranks. Yeah. Yeah. Who beat it on Grand Master. Like, um, I think I watched Snake Plays games beat it in Grand Master mode. I'm like, I don't know. I can't. I can't do this. There's um, some people who just yeah. live for um, like the most difficult level settings in games. And I think it's important. Like if you feel like you can do that, it's, I think it's a good yeah. idea to kind of push yourself and see how far you can go. But there is absolutely no shame whatsoever in playing in easy mode or, you know, cause everyone plays games for different reasons. Some people want a brutal but, challenge yeah. and other people just want a beautiful yeah. story. I am more the second one than the first one. However, I do want to one day beat Cuphead. That's like my dream. Like I'll, I will feel, I will feel like, okay, like I'm, I'm not bad <laughs> if I can beat this game, but it's, it's Cuphead's ridiculous. Brutal. But it, it's a gorgeous game. It's stunning. It's a stunning game. And I don't, there are times where I've played it and I'm like, man, I am not getting past this level today, um, but you're really pretty to look at. So <laughs> this is fine. This is totally fine. I don't mind staring at these enemies again Hollow and again. Hollow the same way. Yeah. So I I just learned that folks have compared Hollow Knight to Dark Souls. I'm like, what have I done? What? What do you mean <laughs> it's like Dark Souls? And they're like, oh, yeah. Like, you have to be very precise and some other stuff. I'm like, no. But I love yeah. the aesthetic of, of Hollow Knight. I, I'm actually doing my first playthrough of that on stream now. And... The music is gorgeous. The yes. characters are really the fun. Art. There's, Ooh. there's, yeah, the art is fantastic. Um, I'm, I really love the game, but there are part, parts where, and I've, and I've just learned to acknowledge this on stream where it's like, all right, you know, this is not working right now. So we're going to play drawing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to vibe in the Sims four for a little while because, Sims you know, I just vibe. Yeah, I don't want to. When you hit a wall, and you're you get frustrated. It's it's it, for me. It's hard to like get out of that mm. well of negative. Like oh god, because then the humor becomes less self-deprecating and more like God, I really suck. And it's like eh, it gets old, and people don't tend to watch folks be like genuinely frustrated. Like I know Barmy's is like. I don't know how he does it where he's able to like I think he's died like 500 600 times oh did he hit 600 no I, he hit 600 to, he hit oh my goodness <laughs> it, yeah, I, I was in a stream earlier so, this morning and it was like 555 yeah, I, or something yeah but he he's he's died over 600 times I think and um in his defense he's playing Dark Souls 2 which is arguably the most difficult oh my god the part i'm at in dark souls 2 is making me bash my head against the wall so i feel him He's, so it, much yeah i could tell that there's there's just some wall that he keeps hitting and i'm like yeah no and but he's so persistent and i admire right. that like you i as a variety streamer i'm like well i'm just 
just not going to play this today. I'm not feeling it. I'm going to switch to. So, you know, you and environment, like, kudos to you all for sticking to it. But I have to say, I've been loving uh, your Indie Friday installments. Yeah. That that has been really, really cool. Really to watch. excited to do and, more. But don't tell that. me about I haven't finished. I haven't finished a Gris yet. So don't tell me how it ends because I think you completed I it. You. Yeah, I completed okay. it. Um, I, all I'll say is it's probably the most beautiful video game I've it's ever played in my entire life. And it just okay. keeps getting better. I promise. Um, the soundtrack yeah. is is actually like my most yeah. listened to album of all of August. Um, it's on Spotify. Yeah. It's so so it's on so Spotify? good. Yes. yes, and it's worth listening That's to it fun. like all the way through and on repeat. And whenever I'm like doing stuff, because at least with listening to music, I either am doing something where I can like have lyrics in it and like vacuuming and cleaning and doing stuff. And I can have like a podcast on or like lyrical music. But if I'm trying to do something serious, like editing or doing some work, I have to have like classical music or jazz or lo-fi. Um, and I've been listening to Gris a lot. That's been my go-to and it's just, just I'm so gonna good. I'm going to have to listen to that. Maybe it's good. Is it good for like I need to get this done. Ooh. Background music. It helps yeah. you focus a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Very yeah. good background music. I'll definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, Ooh. when it comes to like like Dark Souls and Hollow Knight and stuff like that, I'll definitely say there's there's an element of you have to you have to like laugh at yourself when you die. Um because oh, I think I, I die so many times. And, yeah. and that's the struggle. Like you you either like get frustrated with it and like bash your head against the wall, or you're just like, well, there we go again. Let's try this again. There we Let's go. have fun. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's been times where I've been playing like Dark Souls recently and I've just keep dying and I'm like, I just feel like I want to end the stream or, or do something else. And sometimes we'll do just chatting for half an hour. Sometimes it'll just be a shorter stream and I'll end it a little bit early. But yeah, some people it's are like, so good with those yeah. super tough games and they can just go for, you know, yeah. 24 hours playing difficult games. And I'm like, how do you have like the mental capacity to do that? Is your next game going to be like Bloodborne or Sekiro or something like that? Um, it'll probably be Dark Souls 3. So because I already did. Dark Souls 3? Yeah, Bloodborne was the first yeah. Souls games I ever played. And oh, okay. I will definitely say um, I recommend everybody to play it because it is one of the most beautiful incredible like weird it's it's kind of got that like tim burton weirdness to it where you're like i don't think i would really? ever ever see anything like this in any other kind of media like in movies or in art it's just so cosmic interesting and hp lovecraft and it's so weird Ooh, but it's so good okay um i am enticed I'll, i am enticed i would definitely recommend it it is hard I don't think it's like as hard as everyone says it is. It almost seems like the Soulsborne games have this community around them that just love to say like how hard it is and they're tough, but I think they're they're capable. They're a challenge that's that can be overcome with persistence. Yeah. Ex yeah. Except Dark Souls 2. All don't right. play Dark Souls 2. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's a good game. It's just it's there's yeah. some parts. I was thinking of having like a challenge hour and during the 24 or something where it's like i'm just playing really hard games i've been avoiding playing so the the dark souls and cuphead or something and i'm just gonna resign myself to dying for you could do it to where it's like at a time. maybe a limit of deaths like i'll play like these three super hard games in like an eight hour period and if i hit like 50 deaths in this one then we gotta move on to the next one kind of have like a little bit of a, yeah. a number i feel okay. like yeah, yeah, yeah. so then if yeah. you do die a lot you're just like well i guess we're moving on to hollow knight never mind oh, no, we did it. right <laughs> we hit the limit darn <laughs> um but yes you know i i was never really big into the souls games either i'm like everyone always talks about them i don't i don't get it and it feels like they're they're similar to hollow knight it's like a roller coaster of emotions like there will be a lot of really lows where you just like why do i play this this is frustrating i don't get this like this is really frustrating but it's almost like you have to have those really low lows to experience the really insane highs when yeah. you finally defeat that boss after like 30 attempts and you're like i did it i did it and you're yeah. on cloud nine you want to flip your desk over you're so ecstatic <laughs> so i feel like those super lows and those super highs they kind of they have to go hand in hand you know yeah i'm currently in a i guess low where i'm in i want to say it's the third it's green path in Hollow Knight, and I'm trying to get to. I'm following that other character, 
yeah. uh, Hornet, Hornet, I think yeah. her name is, and, and uh, I, I'm at the point where it's like, okay, I have to go here, but every path I take, it's like blocked, and I'm like, I don't mm. know how to get around this, so now I need to, like, okay, I know that exploration is a big part of this game, I'm just gonna need to, there are times where I'm like, I feel like I'm getting lost yeah. in Hollow Knight, but it's like, okay, I think they just wants me to experience so I, I need to like take a step back and just enjoy the exploration aspect and then hopefully i find the key that lets me do the thing that gets me to the other side um yeah luckily it's a, it's a beautiful game i don't know if i'd feel the same way playing dark souls i don't find it pretty to look at it's mm. kind of drab i have seen some very nice levels like particularly very unsaturated ice levels yeah very yeah gray. so it's like eh. yes it's but um there's some like bosses that are I, I think you were playing like some wolf boss or something like oh that mm. looks kind of cool um but that's a lot of a lot of, a lot of patience to get those <laughs> <laughs> to get to that point where it's like ah, okay I was yeah. actually talking a few days ago about that where somebody just came out with a mod for Dark Souls 2 where it actually gets rid of the artificial light and like fires are actually the light source and the sun is the light source and it totally just makes it look so different like there's actual contrast wow. in it and there's like really dark areas and, and like you're walking around with a torch and you can see just the flicker effects and the lighting effects and yeah oh. I, I feel like that's one of those games where they're just like players got to see right so let's just make everything yeah. as unsaturated and gray color and bright as possible and it definitely could use some uh some saturation and color in it for sure um like Marvel movies they're all desaturated to to some extent but yeah i totally yeah, get yeah. what you're saying about hollow knight though in the sense like that's one problem i probably have with the game one thing i'm not super in love with is the fact that if you die to a boss or you're exploring the areas are so huge and getting from point here all the way to over here can be like 15 minutes all the way and then you die to the boss in two seconds and you're like well i guess we're doing another 15 minute happened. walk there it's yeah a struggle. that's what happened on monday i'm like ah i'm all the way back at this bench <laughs> cool and you just gotta laugh it off and be like whoops well i'm back at the bench um, <laughs> i need to find another bench <laughs> i know i do want to ask um quite a bit about like art as well because if sure. we don't talk about art at all during the podcast i'm going to be disappointed because you are an absolutely oh, fantastic oh. artist oh um, thank you what originally like piqued your interest with wanting to learn like how to create art start like drawing um i know you use like a tablet right for most of your art yep. i use i use a wacom i think it's an intuos an intuos pro or something it's it's off on the shelf there um i've been drawing since i was four years old um wow. i'm self-taught i think i took one art class in college and hated it because it was all about um still life and you know the things that you're supposed to know. I, I kind of regret like not taking more uh, classes in art school to get like the fundamentals, like mm -hmm. particularly anatomy. I there's still things I like basic stuff that I want to like get down in order to um, make my characters a little more uh, dynamic when I draw them. But um, I started drawing, uh, and I've actually talked about this on. Um, on stream I, I i watched a lot of cartoons as a child i was uh my parents divorced when i was seven um no when i was no when i was seven and so um i watched a lot of tv uh I was raised by my grandparents who um didn't speak a lot of english i'm cuban-american and um i would draw the cartoons i watched and so what i would do at school to make friends is i would draw like hey arnold or um a pokemon or something very non-discreetly so like if your glance at my desk it's obviously obviously see that i was drawing something right, right and i would catch somebody's attention they'd be like hey you draw that's really cool and i'm like yeah I, I i draw a little bit what's your name Ooh, like a good and intro then that's how 
Icebreaker. Yeah, that's and that's how I would, yeah, that's how I would make friends. The problem was then they discovered that I drew and there were always at least, you know, some homework assignments that required some creative efforts and they would ask oh. me to draw things and then not sign them mm. so that they could pass it off as, Very sus. as their own thing. Very sus. Um, but yeah, I've just been... I, I watched a lot of Nickelodeon and a lot of... Um, it was mostly Nickelodeon. And um, so my work has been described as like Pepper Ann meets like a hint of anime or something like that. Because I also have a, like light anime influence in there. And I just draw because I, I enjoy it. Um, I don't particularly think that I'm very good at it um i just really enjoy drawing uh folks that i admire so i've been really having fun with streamer doodles or i'll doodle folks that i watch and enjoy on stream and it's almost kind of like the same when i was a kid where it's like here's a way i can connect with you because i'm too shy to dm you and then that kind of opens the door a little bit to get to know them and not as like uh primarily like pri a primary like networking vehicles just like i don't know how else to like say something because either your chat's like really busy and i'm still new to your community and i don't want to like you know come off really right. awkward um and it's always nice to like it's always nice to give something you know um and so i i i have found art streams to be um very relaxing for me um if i can get into like the dumb like streamer talk for a second like yeah. the numbers for my art streams aren't that great probably because i'm not that good and i'm not drawing things people are familiar with it's usually a, a commission or doodles Emotes. of original characters Emotes. emotes john emotes for gentari i'm so excited shout but, out you know, gentari love her I, shout out to gentari so <laughs> she's so good she's so good um but i have learned to just say don't like every stream does not need to be like a mega hundred like, viewer I, stream some thing streams. yeah I don't need like I just need to vibe I just need to draw and get out of my head for a little bit and get my emotions out onto a canvas and and move on because um I need to make that space for myself um otherwise I won't make the time for it and then I start getting antsy and then I'm like what do I do um it's like a, and so, a like a meditation thing, right? Like a release kind of thing. Yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I. There are times where it's been very healing to just uh, free draw and just doodle what comes in, and then, um, and I've just started like inviting chat to like throw in like requests. So, uh, Andy requested a uh, portrait of him as what's his face from um i want to say red dead redemption so he had like the bandana and the the cowboy hat and he looked oh, yeah, kind of yeah. gritty but it, but it's but it's him with the suspenders and everything and i'm like this is so fun um i haven't so, played red know, dead I, but yes i know <laughs> i've not played red dead and i'm like okay and i had the you know i i used a reference i set a layer i i trace a little bit so i can get like the basic thing um and I think I drew suits with a Bloodborne hat. Oh, that was yeah. very, it was very tough to draw. I, I was like, say, oh no. There's everybody loves that though. When you take like a friend or a streamer you really admire and like cartoonify them, even like, cause I've had some people send me drawings like of me and I don't care the quality of how like amazing Mona Lisa it is, or if it's even a stick figure, just the fact that somebody took time out of their day to do that in yeah. any shape or fashion is every single time I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Wife, look at this, look at this. And she's like, it's a stick figure. It's a stick figure that with a line that says Zephyr's XP on it. I'm like, but still somebody did that. <laughs> it's so humbling like i've it gotten is. fan art in in um from my community members and it's like 
I have fan art. Like I have right. one regular uh their name is Reckless, who has drawn Cosmo, my dog, and I'm just like, Oh, it's the most perfect thing. This is so perfect. You don't don't change ever. Um it is it's it's so humbling because it's like you took the time to make this masterpiece um for me of me sometimes i look great by the way <laughs> um it's it, it's really really cool because then you have uh you have the like a thing doesn't it, right. it doesn't take up space because it's but you have like this this tangible thing that from them to you, you. Can point to from them to to me yeah it's it's so humbling streaming has been such a humbling experience in in so many ways and i'm just I, I I I try to do this through the um I have a redeem that's inspired from Argue Barmies and Snake Plays games where I take a minute to thank folks that redeem this channel point thing. It's like a toast to the person. Just as a way to to say thank you. Like I tr really try to do my best to thank my community for their support and for being there whether they're lurking or they're chatting or or whatever like it's just so humbling to know that folks like believe in your content and like believe in you as a as a creator and are willing to not only necessarily like spend money but to spend time like time is just so valuable nowadays and yes. it, it it's just like it, it kind of takes my breath away sometimes like wow you chose to spend like two plus hours here when you could have been doing anything else and you know sometimes i get in my head and it's like why i don't deserve this but it's like no 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 like it's okay because there are other people there that support the notion that you're good like right. embrace that try to embrace that and internalize right. that that's that's a struggle that's a struggle like yeah the confidence piece of is it like is am i good it, like am i worth tuning into and i i i hope so i i hope so and i and i try to you know do better every time i hit that that goal live but it's it's there, there's just something wonderful about uh having a community to to be inspired by and to be motivated by and to want to make um want to make proud you know yeah at the end of the day, I, I stream for myself to get back to the what brought me in. I, I stream because I need an outlet for my feelings and, you know, my sadness, sometimes my anger, sometimes about my mom. Um, but along the way, it's like I, I, I do stream for for others. I do try to make a space for others to to feel at home and to feel, you know, that they are loved and supported and appreciated and and you know that they matter right. um and you know i'm just so i'm just really blessed to have met so many people over the last few months it's just it's been quite a journey and you know it's humbling because there's you learn something new with every person that comes in and introduces themselves and um lets you and lets you in to whatever they're going through right. because now you're like wow i never i've never seen this situation up close i've never seen this struggle like i haven't had, had proximity to this it's i've like tangentially have have dealt with it but any given thing but now there's like an actual person with this issue here and now I need to respond to it. How do I how do I do that? And to do that on the fly is um is hard, but it's also very, very humbling. So I, I'm just so blessed to, to have my wholesome chaos community, my cosmonauts, as I as I like to call them. Because Cosmo, my dog, just drives everything or stops everything. He's unplugged my computer twice when oh, I've no. gone live. And uh my but, List. one of my regulars has um, a drew cosmo with like a plug in his mouth and it says no stream only cosmo and so i'm trying <laughs> to awesome. figure out how to work that into an overlay because it's just it's just so precious it's golden um, 
I've had one Anywho. of my dogs jump yeah. up to and like smash my keyboard and I, I don't know. That clip. It was so right. good. You were like, are we and still I, alive? That was you started cursing and you were like, Ellie, what the hell did you do? Right, you right. Like, and everything was just like, what's going on? <laughs> that was so good. But you that know was, what? For all day. the for all the few mistakes that happen every now and then having fur friends has been like just such a life-saving thing for myself um i um i picked up cosmo i want i want to be mindful of, of your times if i oh, I, I picked up cosmo i picked up cosmo the day after my mom died and um i thought that i you know i the breeder because i'm allergic to, to dogs and the this is like peak pandemic dog time so it was very hard to we, he was one of three puppies and we were one of at least 100 families looking for a dog and they somehow picked us and oh, it wow. just so happened that my mom died suddenly the day before we were supposed to pick him up and the breeder was like hey so i am really sorry like, I am happy to hold on to him for another week or two while you get your affairs in order. Like, whatever you need, I, I can do. And I just thought, I really need my dog. Like, I need my dog with me. Um, and so we made the six hour drive to New York and I got to hold my first dog in more than a decade. Um, and I cried, Zeph. Oh my God, did I cry. Um, he has saved my life absolutely like 100 percent has saved my life and he knows because he has unfortunately his formative years growing up as a puppy were around a very sad crying bob all the time where you know just sobbing openly on the couch now he knows like if i start crying he'll run to me immediately or he'll hear oh and God. like try to find my way to me and then he used to scratch my face to get me to stop crying <laughs> A little scratch and i'm like oh not the I best know what way. You're trying to do, but this, this really hurts but now right. he um he he'll just like sit and allow me to to scratch him or he'll lick my face and oh be a little more uh, um there and i just watched the docu like a mini documentary like you know those like vox explained things oh, yeah, on i love those they had they had one on dogs mm -hmm. and they scientists figured out that Dogs are very in tune with humans because they can sense the different hormones or something in sweat. Mm. So like puppy sweat versus stressed sweat. And they can pick up the sense that that are uh, discerned the difference between uh those two states. Yeah. And they just they just beeline and it's wow. like wow. This is super um, fascinating. Yeah, dog, dog dogs are I love dogs. Cats are fine. Like I'm I'm good with cats. Especially Ziata great cat He's but pretty i awesome. am i am such a <laughs> i'm such a dog um such a dog person i love i think there's something they, also they bring in, me so much joy in our brains like the way we look at um like your child and the brain it, whatever yes. like uh neurons that go off that's like associates the child there's something similar that with dogs as well they've almost like hijacked that portion of your brain to be like this is not a dog this is like a baby this is your baby they said, yeah they talked about how puppy dog eyes was an evolved trait um so that they could get along well with humans and survive um they also talked about the levels of um certain wasn't dopamine it was some other thing endorphins it's the maybe. same when you look uh endorphins are uh not 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 oxy it's oxytocin oxy something one of the brain Some chemicals. Words that I, one of the brain chemicals. <laughs> it's the same one that you get when you look at your a newborn child. When a mother looks at their newborn child, the, the same stuff gets released right. when you're looking at a dog. They're just they're so perfect. I was watching your your pups on the couch. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, they're so. I wish I could me. have a golden, but I would be sneezing like like crazy unfortunately yeah we, we were like kind of going back that. we were going back and forth before we got our dogs of like if we wanted a labrador or we wanted a golden because they're very similar like super similar dogs um but we want golden just because of the the fluff and the fur but yes I, I would say labradors are short or hair as well but um yeah yeah when we actually moved to our current place that we live in um 
we ended up getting our dogs like certified as um what were they like emotional support dogs yeah, or, oh, yeah, like, wow. emotional support dogs and at first when we did it if i'm being 100 percent honest at first when we were going into the doctors to do it i think i was more on the side of like this is just a way so we don't have to pay rent fees like wink 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 but i really truly <laughs> believe like being honest but i truly believe now like growing with them over the years they're they are such an emotional support for me in so many ways and and i mean i i, I truly believe deep down like i don't think i would honestly probably be here if i didn't have my dogs because yeah. i mean days coming home from work just so stressed out there's something so incredible about just like laying down in bed and then fur friend jumps up and just cuddles up on you and gives you just that unconditional love that you don't really i mean even you know from a relationship or a partner and like i, lo I love my wife and everything but you know, sometimes humans are selfish and have their own reasons for wanting to do things or not do things. Yeah. Whereas like that dog is always there for you. Like they have such a bond yeah. and unconditional love and, and they won't ever say no to wanting to cuddle with you. It is love. It is that you should watch. I'm going to link you to the, the documentary so you can watch it. It's, it's, if it's one of the Spot Vox on. ones, um, I actually have the whole, yeah. like their entire explains of like everything on my ad list on Netflix. Awesome. So I'll probably watch it here in the few days. Um, yeah, there's a they ton have, of fascinating they have a new ones. season coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love all the, <laughs> the money ones or like how credit cards work or how like finance the stuff work. The credit card one was really interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, really, it, really good, cool topics. Yeah, finance stuff always, always super intrigues me. I'm like such a, a nut when it comes to money and savings and investing and stuff like that. So when I saw the credit card ones, I'm like, oh, this is so up my alley, and it's so fascinating, scary, upsetting, it is. interesting, it, it, like opportunistic in some ways, and totally deplorable in other ways. And it, there's so many things, just not even credit cards, but just in society that are like such mixed feelings, you know, or like maybe some things of it are good and other things are just straight up just terrible. Not, so not, yeah. Um, and predatory predatory <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like when you hear stories of people getting going to college, you know, 18 year old kids going to college and them getting like, if you sign up for this credit card for a thousand dollars, we'll give you a free pizza or like some of the horror stories oh about my that. God. And people are like, Hey, I got a thousand dollars. Let's go buy a PlayStation and some games. And they don't know anything about it. I, I think that's, that's more of a, I wouldn't even call it like the credit card companies being bad. They're like a product of a much larger problem in our society when it comes to finance yeah. and lack of financial education and people people can yeah, go financial off literacy yeah it's a huge yeah, yeah, problem yeah. people can go off to war at 18 and like die for their country but they they're not ever going to be taught about yeah. what a mortgage is what interest is what like on time uh, payments are yeah. credit score that's a whole nother a that's a whole nother conversation extremes <laughs> right um yeah, finance is, is so fascinating it for good and bad. Um, that makes one of us. <laughs> so, my, my husband's the, the finance geek, but yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I'm there, the same there, way. There, I, there, there's some rabbit holes that you can definitely fall into, especially I'm not. We're not going to get into this because then we can talk for another hour. Uh, <laughs> crypto. I'm sure you have oh boy. opinions on on cryptocurrency. Yeah, and, and, and NFTs and <laughs> I actually haven't looked too much into NFTs, if I'm being honest. Like, I'm very, very unfamiliar with them. Um, crypto, I do have pretty in-depth opinions on and some things I really like, some things I really love, some things I'm really weary of and scams abound all over throughout mm. it. And it's all fascinating. But yes, that could be a whole nother rabbit hole. <laughs> to the moon. To the moon, to the moon, right? Um, before we do end though, I did have a couple quick questions that I really did want to ask you kind of stemming back Go on the streaming it. related aspect of everything. Sure. Um, sure, sure, sure. A good one that always gets some good answers. If you could tr time travel and go in the past and tell your day one streaming self, one solid piece of streaming advice, what would you tell yourself? Lobs is always going to fail. <laughs> the what? Streamlabs is going to um, fail? Lobs is always going to fail. Like, um... Poor Streamlabs. I think one... I think one would be, um... Don't worry about the equipment. 
I I think I went a little too tech happy uh, at the beginning. No regrets. Right. Look at this mic. Don't you want to just stare at it for Ooh, the next six I like hours? The um, I I love the yeah. I, I got this mic not for the audio but for the lights. But um, I would say you know have plans. Don't get don't get angry when you die and lose. Um, and I I think I would also say um it's not always going to be about grief like you're going to find other um things to talk about and you know i'm very thankful that i was able to uh, move away a little bit from that primary focus it's still there but you know at the beginning i was like i'm gonna like this is gonna be what i what i talk about but you know at the end of the day like for me and my journey, like I, I realized, like, I feel like I would be stuck in this kind of, in a place that I didn't want to be in, or I felt like it, it would have been almost like a cycle that I couldn't get out of. Where it's like, do I really want to be known as streamer whose mom died of COVID? Like that's, that's the, the byline. Like, no, like I want to be known for the environment that I bring together and the, the shenanigans that we pull on on the channel good wholesome chaotic shenanigans um and so i i guess i would also tell me like be patient you're gonna make mistakes and um uh, you know your mom will always be there in, in some way and you don't it, it doesn't have to be uh, an end-all be-all like you can make the stream uh what you want in the end like as i've gone on i've realized oh like i can i can do whatever i want that's cool um realizing i have that freedom and i don't necessarily have to pigeonhole myself into like the specific box has been very um liberating and and i've opening but yeah first thing because wallets like your your snowball mic was fine. Frankly, <laughs> 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 I gave it to another friend who started streaming when I upgraded. But yeah, just like realizing, like yeah, it's like you're good. Like you can make one monitor work. I did have to upgrade the the PC itself. Like I would not have been able to stream from my um, my MacBook. It just yeah. wasn't powerful enough um, to juggle both things. Um, and yeah, just take your time. There's no rush. And I still tell myself that um, now that I know what how much work it takes and how how momentum builds and what you need to like um, focus on. Like, there's no rush. I'm in no rush to hit partner. I'm in no rush to get to a thousand followers. I'm no I'm in no rush to get to any specific point like when it happens. And I say when because I know it will um it'll happen right. and you know I'm, i just need to enjoy the journey because there's a lot there's a lot there, there's probably more to learn about the journey than the milestones um that you try to tick off but yeah did i answer your question Seth? oh yeah yeah that was a great answer <laughs> um Good. on the like hardware specifically i absolutely love and agree with that i think so many people get caught up in like if i want to stream i have to have fancy microphone or fancy overlay or fancy lights or fancy like if, if i'm being honest with everybody if you really want to stream most likely you already have everything you need to go live on twitch or youtube or whatever and just start streaming you can stream straight from your playstation you can stream straight from your xbox you can stream with you know just like your earbud thing headphones and with a little mic on them like you can just get started and going so when people are like oh i'm saving up to buy a new mic or i need to have the right lights unfortunately and people don't like hearing this but that is just excuses you're giving yourself yeah. um if you really want to do something and not even just streaming if you really want to do something you just got to do it you just got to start on it um and you and you have to know that it's an iterative process like your it stream grows. is always going to be evolving right? right and so you can always change you can always finesse over time that it, it's a marathon yes. without a finish line like you're you're always going to be moving forward so one yeah, of my, one of my no favorite rush. one of my favorite streamers on twitch 
who is now a partner, streams straight from her PlayStation 4. No alerts, no fancy overlays. She doesn't have a super fancy this mic. Dahlia? Dahlia the monkey. This? Yep. Yeah. I, always, I remember when she got partner. I, I think you waited her to pieces. Day, like, Congrats. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, like a week or two ago. She's awesome. And she just is such a. I always talk about her because she really is that definition of just kicking ass and not having to spend you know huge amounts of dollars on a fancy microphone or fancy lights or whatever she's just people come there because they want to see her and want to see her play some games and have fun and her community they and like everything. the vibes yeah exactly yeah. exactly um but i will also add as well if if you do got some money to invest and you do want to get something to just upgrade your screen your stream give it some oomph definitely go audio a hundred percent spending $50 yeah. or a hundred dollars to get a really nice microphone can be night and day difference when you come into somebody's stream because nobody wants to yeah. like go into a stream and it sounds like a, a radio from 1920s with all the distortion and you're like oh my I, goodness yeah I gotta I just gotta get my filters right that's all just, I just I still have some I have I still have some troubleshooting to do so yeah I would also just recommend like YouTube for taking the, win. the time to, to yeah taking your time to like really understand what the hell gates and suppressions and all these yeah. things are so I think I do, I currently don't have any filters and that's probably not great <laughs> um but it'll, it'll it just takes time and but, I'm but first thing there's is no just rush. start just start yeah, just get, get better, out there. add all the noise yeah. gates and everything later but just start yeah um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah one other one i got for you what is one thing you absolutely love about streaming on twitch iris um i love connecting with people um letting them know that they are safe and welcome as they are i love the, the the community building aspect that that comes with streaming and frankly the the creative freedom that comes with it i've never really had a job or a role where i've had like this much input and drive and like focus to mold something creatively like and like sh truly shape it to be what my vision is and that's very powerful um so it's given me a lot of food for thought for um the future but it's it's so freeing to have a um an opportunity to channel my um my experience and my creativity into um that's frankly not just crying but all, and and not just like the usual things that you could do um as as hobbies it's it's been a really a really powerful tool for not only figuring out who i am as a person and who i am as a creative but also mm -hmm. like who am I for others and who, what am I, like, what am I bringing to people? So thinking about like, not necessarily like the value add or whatever, but like getting out of, outside of myself and, 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 and being much more, um, self-aware, like, much more self-aware, um, and, and humble, um, frankly, um, it's just, it's just been such a such a wonderful, humbling, challenging, uh, joyful journey, and you know I'm just I'm so glad I discovered it because I I like I knew of Twitch, but I was not a Twitch consumer, so to speak. I never I was I never watched streams. I I never under really understood the appeal now i get the appeal it's like hanging out with your best friends for four hours at a time if not more right. and it's it's really fun um so yeah I, I dig it um and i'm just really excited to see uh 
what's next because i i stand to learn a lot more there's lots of folks that i want to connect to that i haven't met yet and uh, because i don't know who they are so you know i i'm just just really excited really really optimistic about where things are are going and you know i the the goal also is to just keep to keep it fun you know it's it's when you have such such like intense i have very high standards for for what i bring i'm very you know type a I, i'm a capricorn i i work very 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 hard so it's you know finding that balance but also like making sure that it doesn't become a a burden like it's it's it always has to it has to stay an outlet and not just like this thing i have to do once it becomes this thing i have to do like it, it it's like a job worth it yeah yeah i don't want it to become a job um so we'll see we'll see what happens as somebody that does this as like the full-time thing i would 100 percent not recommend doing what i'm doing i think Having a job, well, even if it's like a part-time job and doing streaming on the side is like a part-time like side hustle, like thinking of it as like that side hustle, um, it just alleviates so much stress and it just makes it so much more fun. You know, kind of in the same sense, it's like, you know, I need a little bit extra money. Should I go drive Uber? Should I go babysit or should I do Twitch streams? Kind of in that same category. Um, but when you don't focus on it for the money, you just focus on creating quality content creating a quality community and just getting even a little bit better every single stream. You don't even have to worry about the money whatsoever. Um, and I think yeah. honestly, thinking too much about money or seeing the gift subs or the bits or whatever, it just adds like an extra level of stress that ne doesn't necessarily need to be there. So. Yeah. I'm not worried about, I work full time. Like I'm not worried about the money aspect. I'm, I'm, I'm pr yeah. I'm privileged to, to say that I'm not, in a place where I'm like freaking out about like income right. from from Twitch, um, I, I'm more so focused on building the community and, and finding and and growing um, at a scalable rate and at a, at a, a genuine rate. Like you know, you want I want to make sure that like my follower count is pretty on par or or better uh then uh or like aligned with the the viewer numbers like it's one thing to have like a thousand followers and six viewers on average versus a thousand followers and 20 or 30. like that mm -hmm. to me is like my, uh ideal for right now yeah. um but i know you know if i ever I, i'd like to if i ever get to that okay like it's time to shift to uh get to partner mode like i i would like to think that you know that step won't be as challenging as it seems but it, it is a it is a challenge you know i'm up for the challenge um yeah and, and i think it's a it's a like i'm not pissed at the metrics that twitch has set for it like i think it's it makes sense like yes yeah. it should be it should be in that ballpark but um that getting to getting there that'll that'll be that'll be the journey but i'm i'm excited and i'm up for the challenge so i'm excited uh, to see your journey because you're already crushing it just right out the gate oh, thank you that um, means a lot coming from you being 100 percent honest really does. um converse yeah, my, 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 i have to say my my chat interaction like is really really stemmed from watching your your stream um I, I was like, man, he's so warm and he responds and he's just like really nice. I want to be really nice and very kind and, and just so and very welcoming. And I, I that's a that's a note that I, I took from you. So thank you, Zach. Um, it, it does it. mean a lot to, to hear that, like. Get that little bit of validation. It's it's really <laughs> I'm so I'm so excited. I'm so, so grateful. Um, it's wild. I'm still like it's ah that that I was invited to 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 do this this um 
podcast. I'm I'm honored and you know, I'm really happy to to share my journey and I'm happy to uh continue the the conversation wherever because I, I think there's still a lot that I can learn. Um and hopefully maybe there's something you can learn from me too. Who knows? I don't know. Absolutely. But it's Absolutely. a it's it's a wonderful streaming is just so dynamic and interesting and uh it's always changing and you, you just never know what never know what you're gonna get out of it so yeah yeah um kind of uh. conversely off of that because we're talking about something you absolutely love about streaming on twitch what is one thing you do not enjoy about streaming on twitch catching my viewer count when i don't want to see it there's one time where um uh, you keep I your viewer started, count up out like, of curiosity I, I i hide it in Streamlabs or in slobs or whatever yeah i hide it because i'm like nope 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 so there was one time where but then i have a bad habit of like checking it oh no and then and then i'm like <sighs> that's one um, one good thing one about I, obs is it doesn't have the yeah, eyeball that you can check on or off that. it's just gone <laughs> There was one time where I forgot to hide it before I hit live and I checked Discord and I think it was Gentari who had messaged me saying, Oh my god, you're you're live. I I have to go to dinner with my my parents, but I hope you have a great stream. And I had looked over and the big fat zero was staring at me. And I was like, Oh no, no one's here. And Jen Jen, my precious Jen Jen, is not gonna be there. <laughs> and I legit had a mini panic attack right as I hit go <laughs> And I'm like, well, there's no turning back now. And so, like, as the screen was there, I'm just like, is this fine? And my husband reminded me, like, it takes a while for the numbers to refresh. Like, very true. People will be there. Yep, yep. And I, you know, I just, hid the thing and but you just have to you just have to go on as if there's lots of folks and they, right. they do come in and yep. i've also learned that you know depending on what you're doing they're not gonna stay the whole time like they're gonna true, leave too. they have they have they have shit to do like they right. have to do things Stopping they have to learn they have to go to work yeah, they stopped it. Like, and I'm so grateful for that. And I can't like internalize why did they leave? Did I, did I get boring? Was I dying too often? Like, they have lives. Right. <laughs> um, so understanding that ebb and flow of a stream has been um, another thing that I've had to kind of like let sink in because it's like, why aren't my numbers just like, you know, continuously going up the or entire something? Time? Right, yeah. it's like, that, like that's so rare. It's right. happened like once or twice. Usually when it's a a, a, a fairly um, large raid or something. But there's always going to be peaks and valleys, and yeah. that's just the nature of the platform. Like you can't, and the internet, you can't keep somebody on a web page for yeah that sustain for four. Hours. Like no, no. So you know, it's that's one thing that I struggle with is the viewer count um because then I, I i start to get psyched out a little bit um the other thing i i guess i struggle with is or the what was the question like what do you hate about streaming or like what's oh, yeah. something that you something you don't enjoy about uh streaming on twitch i i would say the handling bad vibes has mm. been a little tricky um where like you want to be supportive and you want to make space like trauma dumping maybe um, yeah uh, yeah kind of, well more it's like a hybrid of trauma dumping and not reading the room and i actually mm. have a a bot response that's saying hey like vibe check um a, a time thing this is like make sure you're like incongruence with chat right and i've had folks just like completely go off do a 180 from like the topic and then you know i i need to acknowledge it mm. um it, i very rarely ignore it unless it's like so out of left field it's like i have i cannot 
like what do i say kind of thing it's, just, it's like what do i say right um and so that's been hard to to navigate it hasn't been a problem as of late but you know like it's it's gonna happen especially when you have this when you're cur trying to curate the space that's very transparent and open and you know like sometimes i don't use the mental health tag as often because i there are times where i feel like people come in on that tag specifically looking for a place to trauma dump um i do use the anxiety tag because i have anxiety and, and depression um but it again that sense of balance how do you create balance and set a respectful a respectable boundary and there was a time where a user or viewer came in and started trauma dumping and i said listen like you know i'm glad that you found this space um but you know understand that chat has a limited bandwidth and i have a limited limited bandwidth this is all on stream and you know we're here for you but and i can point you to the resources but like there's i'm not a not psychologist much I can, right. yeah like i can't like i wish i could fix it but like you know uh there's only so far we can we can take and we can take it and you know they didn't come back you know they disappeared <laughs> and you know that that's just what happens and i hope that person is okay wherever they are um but that comes with the territory of right. you know on making the these, these spaces yeah and you're on the internet so you know i i i want to make sure that everyone feels heard but it's such a it's such a balancing act of making space because you also have to be aware of the folks that are around you because you don't right. know uh, you know basic example someone comes in and trauma dumps about uh uh alcohol abuse issues i don't know who's in chat who is struggling with that themselves i don't know if someone in chat who's lost someone to alcohol abuse and that becomes a, a triggering statement like I, ha I have to protect my community like right. that's kind of like my rule zero like my community like my i need to protect my community right and um as i've grown like i've realized that responsibility is just getting bigger and that's been stressing me out a little bit but um you know it takes a village and i think the community also understands like they have a role to play in it too in calling stuff out in self-moderating what what ha and and doing vibe checks and luckily i have some really fantastic mods to to help me um with that i can't say enough, like i i actually another thing i took from you was your mod shout out where you have like a periodic like thank you to my mods and you list them all oh, yeah, yeah. with lots of hearts <laughs> i i i recently did that because i got that one from deserve. super mergentroid so passing it really? down yes. Look at that. yeah you're gonna you're gonna have to send me your list of like <laughs> mentor role model um everybody streamers that honestly I, can, I feel yeah. like legitimately every person i interact with there's something that there's something to be taken away of value from everyone whether it's just Are you? how they how they hold themselves how they converse you know fluently how they handle chat how they have overlays or how they have shout outs or just whatever literally yeah. I, I genuinely feel like everybody i've come in contact with on twitch uh, as a streamer you know there's always something where i'm like how do you do that or that's a good idea yeah. and um i or yeah. sorry yeah go ahead finish your thought and then i'm gonna ask you something um I, I just i've always been of the mindset too there's not much of originality out there in the world if anything we're all just little bits and pieces of like two percent of this yeah. person eight percent of that person just amalgamation of all of our influences and that's what makes us original absolutely what were we gonna ask? I was Sorry. gonna ask, what are your opinions on those shout outs that play clips? I love those, honestly. Those are my favorite. <laughs> I do oh love God, those because they're random. Me no, I hate it. <laughs> I, I don't have them set up myself um, just because I haven't figured out how or at least taking the time to, to check on how to do it. But I've thought about adding them to my stream um, because I love the randomness of them because you can get something that's just absolutely ridiculous or you can get something where you're like, 
that's kind of the the flip of the coin though because you could play one and for somebody new that's never met you before they could watch a funny clip and be like oh i like that that's funny let me go follow or it could be one yeah. where i remember i was in a friend's stream and they shouted somebody out and the clip that played was them putting their like foot to the camera and just like <laughs> like wag it, <laughs> waggling their toes or whatever and i'm just like maybe not the that's best hilarious. first impression but <laughs> <laughs> um but yes i i do like the the video clips they're pretty funny there's one clip i have where someone did like a the diva redeem it was called something else i think it was it, back then it was called sing 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 um and they of course requested rick astley's never, never gonna give you up <laughs> and so oh. they clipped it and i think they titled it like click here and it's me singing the song <laughs> And that clip came up today or yesterday, and I'm like, oh. no, not yesterday, or the day before. And I'm like, no, why? Why is it? So it is going to force me. To, it is going to force me to like curate my my clips. Luckily, I could <laughs> you're able to like download them off and and have it for you right, know right. your moment. I'm actually currently working on with a friend a a, a channel trailer because i don't know anything about editing video so i'm like hi friend that is a videographer can you do things with these 40 gigs of <laughs> right right here's all my clips video ever content. let's make something yeah yeah let's let's do a let's do a thing so that that's my those are my my next big things the the uh channel trailer going live someday and the the 24 hour stream I'm excited um, for the 24. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be. You phenomenal. got this. You absolutely I'm, got I'm... this. <laughs> it's um, it's the it's the not sleeping thing. It's yeah. not so much like what do I stream. It's the the sleep deprivation that I'm like very. I'm 33. All right. Yeah. I, I I I I need sleep. It's really sleep hard for good. me to operate without sleep. Um, no, I'm the same I didn't way. sleep well last night, so that's why I had a coffee because I was gonna take a nap before we did our talk, but I didn't have a chance to after the Cosmo nonsense or he um, lost his absolute favorite to toy to a 10 year old child. Um, but, you know, I, I've done it once. I can do it again. And it'll probably be a charity stream as like mm. a further way to like motivate me to stay awake yeah um some goals or something so, yeah I'll, I'll do some some milestone goals like giveaways i used to do like a lot of giveaways and then i realized this is very expensive i was gonna um, say <laughs> playstation 5 giveaway what oh no, no. <laughs> i've done like it's mostly been gift cards like steam gift cards nintendo eShop gift cards i've done uh cameo giveaways mm. um where folks get a gift card to um uh to cameo where they can request a video from a voice actor they really like i had a i did a cameo or i had a cameo done from uh billy west and um i i, I straight up told him like listen my mom my mom died of covid uh her birthday's in a couple weeks i'm planning to watch this to cheer myself up and he did all the futurama voices and it was so great and you know to be able to like give that moment of joy to somebody else is is really fun and it's like not a your run out of the mill giveaway thing like no it's not a full pc build but like you know it's you're making a memory in in some ways and that's that's kind of cool right, um, right but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna figure out some some milestones i am not gonna do bean boozles or licorice or because i got so sick because I was eating chunks of licorice that were like oh, no, no, around no. this big. And I hate licorice. Like I was getting close to V word. Um, and it was just, no, not, I'm not, not I can't happening. do that again. I have to do, yeah, I have to do something else. That's, you know, just embarrassing. I so I, I might just <laughs> seen that one. A yeah, lot. <laughs> I was more, I was thinking more of reading like fan fiction. I wrote when I was like, 13 years old <laughs> maybe even more daring than pie still, in the face yeah, it's really <laughs> daring but it, it's it, it's fun i did it for um i think i did it for the the one of the chair the last charity stream i did and it was ooh, fun 
I, I did can voices. Only imagine. It, was, it was fun. So yeah, no, you can look at the VOD, <laughs> but feel free to imagine. <laughs> right, right. Um, I did have two final more questions for you for the podcast. Okay. If you're ready for them, these are two of my yeah, favorites, absolutely. and I love asking everyone these. In your own words, what does streaming <laughs> mean to you, Iris? Streaming means to me an opportunity to um, let people in and to every stream, every stream brings an opportunity for me to get a little piece of myself back after losing my mom. And I don't know when I'm going to be fully whole, um, but it it means the world because it's through streaming that I found friends that I feel I've um, made for life. And also this, like when they say, when they, des when people describe their streams as like my little corner on the internet, like it's not a joke. Like it does feel like this insulated, happy place that you can make what you want like it's just so liberating to to have that creative freedom to do whatever you want within tos of course right. to do whatever you want and to and to to put forward your your most authentic self um to others so it it means the world and it's just again such a humbling experience um and just a way to it's also been um a meaningful tool for pushing myself in a way i didn't think i'd be able to do before um good challenge in the sense of yeah it's challenging to like there's just so many little challenges that kind of become this Popper, you <laughs> right. kind of become this like <laughs> kind of becomes this this bigger challenge of um like okay what is what is the content that i want to plan is there any theme that i want to do with this content how am i going to advertise this content who do i want to collaborate with if possible like there, it just like it becomes very layered and it's 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 a really fun puzzle to kind of uh tackle from a content planning perspective and you know it's been weird thinking of myself as like a content creator because I like yes it's con like I feel like my my streams are I guess technically content but it just feels like not like the normal fun... content people think of yeah uh, yeah it's like it's you know just happy fun Dreaming. chaos weird time yeah, yeah and you know I I'm just so I just feel so lucky to be able to do it um and you know. I'm lucky that it's it 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 hasn't um it doesn't feel like a job and I hope to to keep it that way and I know that in itself is a challenge cuz trust me I I I I'm currently feeling burnt out like generally but I've got I have burnt out at jobs before and, and I I can see myself doing that with streaming cuz I go ham in with everything that I do <laughs> got to pace so, yourself So again finding that yeah, finding that balance and, and pacing myself, remembering that it's a, it's a marathon and that there's no yes. rush and that, you know, my definition of success may change months from now, years from now, and just got to go with it. So, yeah. That was an awesome answer. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. Last question for you <laughs> of the entire podcast. Where can all of our viewers and listeners connect with you online? Oh, so good. Um, I am at Iris Plays Games on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I do not have a TikTok. Maybe Yet. I can be convinced to get a TikTok. Um, I'm, I'm a little scared of TikTok. I feel like I'm too old for TikTok, but it's fine. It's fine. I'll figure it out. Um, and obviously at Iris Amelia on, on the Twitchosphere. Um, I do have a Tumblr. That Iris plays games. That's collecting a little bit of of dust because I was going really hard into Loki, and then the series took a really bizarre turn, and I just 
repelled. <laughs> but I'm hoping to to start posting, like making uh, gifs and and posting them uh, to the to that channel again. But yeah, mostly uh, Twitter and Instagram is, is where you can find me, and of course here on Twitch at Iris Amelia. And of course, all of that's going to be linked down in the description below in the YouTube video. So don't forget to check out Iris there. Um, she's one of my favorite streamers. She's amazing. We all need some Iris love in our life. A hundred percent. Oh, thank you, Zep. Thank you, Zep. Everybody, thank you all so much for watching and listening to this week's episode of the Zephcast. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help the channel out a lot. And if you want to see more of your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters in the near future, don't forget to subscribe. It's absolutely free to do so, and we'll be having even more exciting content coming up soon. Thank you all again for watching. Zephyr's XP, Iris Amelia. And I'll catch you all in the next ones, my friends. Much love, everybody. See ya.